What if Naruto was OP but neglected? Let's go. There was two prophecies in the universe, one on Earth, alone, the child of prophecy as we know it. But then there was one interstellar one, throughout the galaxy and even the universe. Throughout millions and billions of years, generation after generation, through every planet. And on one of those planets, there would be someone strong. Somebody so incomprehensibly strong that they would seem as a king or a god even. They would possess all the abilities from their whole planet. And even more, with incredible intellect, they were the ones to bring peace to their planet and neighboring ones too. Perhaps even to rule the galaxy. Some people thought of this as a myth. But some, even the most powerful ones, such as the Otsutsuki king, thought of this as destiny. Destiny that one person someday could unite the galaxy. To bring peace and harmony, this person would be known as Naruto. Naruto, born on the Ninetales attack on Konoha. On Earth, born to Kushina Uzumaki, the current Ninetales Shinshuriki, as well as Minato Namikaze, the current Hokage, the fourth Hokage. Naruto, however, was not born until after his sister. The older twin was named after their grandmother, Mito Uzumaki, the first Ninetales Shinshuriki and wife of Hashirama Senju, the first Hokage, and, along with his friend Madara, the creator of the Leaf Village. As soon as Naruto takes his first breath, all the tailed beasts which are spread across the shinobi villages immediately feel Naruto's presence, and even just for a moment, leave their Jinchuriki to come to Naruto, give them some of their chakra and abilities, therefore also giving him some of their thoughts and emotions. Minato got a chilling, scary feeling from Naruto. Every trained shinobi cell in his body was telling him to kill Naruto, his second born son who was just born moments ago. However, before Minato could even get a chance to think about what was going on, Naruto was snatched from him by a masked man, a supposed Madara Uchiha. The regular events would follow. Minato, after fighting Madara Uchiha, which he had thought would be much stronger, then started going head to head against the strongest tailed beast of them all, the Nine-Tailed Fox. Naruto, however, made the fight more difficult because now he was crying, which made him let out chakra with an aura of a monster, worse than any tailed beast. Kurama noticed Naruto too. She knew he would get sealed eventually by the fourth Okage. He just wanted to ensure that he would be sealed into Naruto, an incredibly powerful baby, just born, which made Kurama believe that he would become a legendary shinobi. When he was sure he was going to be sealed into Naruto, he let it happen and stopped resisting, which allowed Minato to seal the tailed beast without having to sacrifice his life for it. Kushina went on to survive this night, becoming the first person to have a tailed beast extracted from her and survive it. Minato also survived because he did not suffer any fatal wounds in his fight. Of course, Naruto's older sister, Mito, who was only born a few moments before him, survived without any injuries since she was not involved in any sort of fighting. Minato told his horror story to some of his close friends and especially the village elders and clan heads. The horror story not being of the nine tails, but of his own son, who seemed like more of a monster than the actual tailed beast. Kushina had a very hard time being a mother. At this point, she had to look after two children. Not just that, but when one of them, this being Naruto, gets angry, sad, or just starts to cry, he lets out a massive chakra resembling that of a tailed beast, which scared her every single time. After about a week, after recovering from her injuries, now being a mother and looking after her children, Naruto's aura flipped a switch inside of Kushina. That day, when Naruto cried again, Kushina unconsciously grabbed a kitchen knife that was right beside her. She did not have any negative feelings towards Naruto, but for some reason, her body was telling her to kill her second-born child, while she was only a baby. The next few days continued and the same thing happened over and over again. She kept grabbing a knife or any sharp object that was near her. She barely slept as she was afraid of what she could do to her own family which is the reason she decided not to tell Minato, because she thought she could deal with it herself. 
After a few days of this, she was currently in the kitchen, making lunch and it happened once more. But this time, she did indeed cut Naruto's arm in one line with a sharp silver kitchen knife. Kushina passed out from the shock, and about 15 minutes later, she regained consciousness again and rushed Naruto to the hospital as soon as she realized what she had done. He was going to be fine, but what she didn't realize is that the only thing keeping him alive for those 15 minutes, whilst his arm was cut open, was the tailed beast's chakra that was inside of him. All the tailed beasts together were using their chakra to heal Naruto, their Jinchuriki. That same day, the tailed beasts talked to Naruto for the first time, as they thought it would be a fitting time. She could see all of them, but only one of them was in a cage. This was the fox, the nine-tailed fox, the one who attacked the village only a few days earlier. The tailed bees started introducing themselves and showing some of their abilities to Naruto, and somehow Naruto understood what they were saying. Even though he is a baby that can't talk or understand anything, he somehow understood the tailed beasts. They were going in order of tails, so Kurama, the nine tails, was last, the one in the cage. He introduced himself, but before he was finished talking, Naruto crawled onto his paw and cuddled himself to sleep, and Kurama let it happen. Naruto was just as soft as the nine tails fur. Kurama was mocked by the other tailed beasts for letting a human child sleep on his paw. Kurama, the almighty tailed beast, letting a mere human child cuddle him. However, Kurama nonetheless enjoyed it a lot. Kurama hasn't felt real love or compassion from any human in a very, very long time, so this was very refreshing. Naruto then came back to the human world as he was just daydreaming, though somehow he knew that there was some reality to what he saw, and it was reassured by the nine voices in his head, each belonging to a tailed beast. When Minato found out about the incident that had occurred that day, he was furious. Not at Kushina for almost killing their son, a baby, but Minato was actually angry at Naruto, a baby who had somehow made his wife do something she would never have. Naruto was making Kushina go mad. Minato knew something had to be done about Naruto, because it was not safe for anyone to handle him. At this point, a rumor passed around. First, only through Kushina's friend group, from Kushina herself, then more and more people knew about it. Just that, it wasn't a rumor. Naruto, a small baby, had truly made Kushina a powerful Jonin Shinobi and the Hokage's wife become mad. Though she did of course recover. She didn't take any long-term psychological damage, though she was a little bit afraid of Naruto though did want to see him again to truly be able to apologize, since she hasn't seen him for about a day. Ever since the incident occurred, Minato, along with the council, clan heads, and of course his wife, came to the conclusion that Naruto should be left in the forest of death on his own to either fight for his survival or die. Either one was fine, though he should be far away from any human and perhaps it was even better to send him off away from the village. But for now, he would be left alone in the forest of death. Without anyone knowing, the tailed beasts taught Naruto many things, about language, even how to write, as well as shinobi history, each tailed beast being able to give some form of insight of their respective regions, clans, and villages as well as Kurama being able to give a lot of insight on the village's founding, Madara Uchiha and the first Hokage, Hashirama. Since Kurama was a main weapon in many of their fights back in the day, as well as Hashirama's wife's Jinchuriki, well, tailed beast. He was the tailed beast of the Jinchuriki. Naruto's intellect grew day after day, and he became smarter than anyone his age would be in the actual village among the actual humans. Naruto also learned some shinobi skills, such as theory, 
tactics, and even by carving his own kunai out of wood, he was able to practice some shinobi tactics and just basic kunai training, with throwing, slicing, and many of those sorts. He was also pushed to the limits physically. He had to do 100 push-ups a day, a 1 kilometer run, and much more. To build up muscle, to be truly the strongest. The tailed beast didn't let him get a moment of rest, and even when he was sleeping, or napping, or just resting, in his mindscape, he was practicing anything. Even if it was just talking, he was learning. Naruto had an incredible intellect that would even rival the Naras, believed to be the smartest clan and family in the world. Naruto could become even smarter than them. Soon, by the age of three years old, Naruto was able to do some hand seals which allowed him to use his first types of jutsu, even if it was very weak ones. At the age of four, he was able to use at least some of each of the tailed beast's abilities, such as acid, fire, rock, and so on. And even try to control some of their chakra, such as Kurama, who was a prime example of giving his hosts chakra. Since Kurama didn't have any fancy special abilities or jutsus, his main focus was sheer strength and chakra. And he did indeed do that. He had massive chakra and good chakra control too. If Naruto ever needed to learn anything about chakra or chakra control, Kurama was the one to talk to. Shukaku was the only one that didn't offer up truly everything that he had, though he did get more lenient and more lovable to Naruto, especially when it was only them two talking. Shukaku showed a more liking side, a more kind side. Naruto built up relationships with each one of the tail beasts better than even Hashirama could. He was truly like the son of Hagoromo, since all the tailed beasts were practically children of Hagoromo, Naruto was like their brother that they never had. A human brother. The tailed beasts were truly happy now. And were very happy to teach Naruto everything they could to make him happy too. Since he did have a very rough childhood and start to his life. And the worst part about it is Naruto didn't even remember or understand most of it, the tailed beasts who were watching everyone's moves had to explain years after the events took place how Naruto and why Naruto actually was kicked out of his own village, not kicked out of the village but prosecuted to become an outsider, to live in the forest of death. One day Naruto whilst training met Shisui Uchiha a young boy, a young prodigy of the Uchiha clan, with a Sharingan already evolved. Being able to throw kunai and use jutsu like no other, especially for his age. Shisui was powerful. Perhaps as powerful as a Shunin, and if not that, then the strongest Genin, perhaps. Naruto wasn't quite sure how strong the people inside the village or academies truly were because he never interacted with them. No one ever met Naruto, and a lot of them actually thought he died since he was just a small baby left in the village of death. We even trained Genin sometimes passed away. The reason no one knew Naruto was still alive is because, well, the tailed beast taught Naruto to control and hide his chakra. Even when he got angry or frustrated from training, Naruto never let out any kind of chakra. He was like a rock. Only by seeing him could you truly see that it's there. Naruto was too scared and shy to talk to Shisui, though he did watch him train for about an hour until Shisui left again. Shisui didn't notice Naruto at all. He was as if he was never there. Naruto was quiet, and his chakra control made him invisible. 
However, Naruto did want to use what Shisui had in his eyes. He asked the tailed beasts about it, and they said that it was a dojutsu special to the Uchiha clan, the Sharingan, and that even though Naruto is incredibly powerful, unless he gets it from another user, he won't ever get it, naturally. But Naruto wasn't pleased with that answer, so for five days, he tried his best to somehow use his eyes and do things special with it. He practiced the Uchiha's jutsu, such as the Fireball jutsu, in hopes that he would somehow get the Sharingan. And on the fifth day, on the end, at the brink of exhaustion, his eyes changed. They changed to one Tomoe Sharingan. It was a miracle. Naruto, a non Uchiha, naturally, by training, got the Sharingan. It was a mystery to even the nine tailed beasts the most knowledgeable and powerful beings on the planet. However, after that, the Tailed Beasts wanted Naruto to train more and more with Sharingan, to fully extend its power to the three Tomoe Sharingan. Though Kurama did get a flashback every time Naruto was using a Sharingan to Madara, using the Tailed Beasts, especially Kurama, to his advantage, killing people and abusing its power. However, Kuramo knew, and was safe to say that Naruto would never use his power for such things, and if then only by Kurama letting him, since Naruto and Kurama had built up such a bond that Kurama was almost like an actual father for Naruto, if not an older brother. Make sure to join my Discord server in the description. Naruto continued to train his Sharingan until he mastered three Tomoe, which took him only about a half month, which is so incredibly fast, it's faster than Madara could've, it's faster than any Uchiha could've, it's probably on an Otsutsuki level. It is so incredibly fast that even the Tailed Beasts were surprised. The Tailed Beasts explained that Naruto has the ability to make a special type of clone, kind of like the Shadow Clones, but only due to the fact that he holds all nine tailed beasts, or at least a part of each one. These clones would be known as the tailed beast style clones. Each clone is able to use one of the tailed beast's chakra and abilities. If used properly, every clone can have each one of the tailed beast's consciousness as well. Winter has arrived, and Naruto is now five years old. Whilst daydreaming after just having finished training, he sees a Hyuga girl given the name Hinata Hyuga. He sees her being bullied by three boys a little older than him, just having started the academy. Before Naruto even got the idea to interfere and help the girl that was his age, Kurama told him not to do it. Naruto is told to just watch and sense his chakra in her eye that isn't yet activated, likely due to her young age, since for anyone who's not Naruto, five years old is still a small child. Naruto is confused because it is unlike the Sharingan, much more calm and relaxed. Naruto asks the Tailed Beast and they say that it is the Byakugan, a powerful dojutsu with a very wide field of vision along with better chakra vision, the ability to see further and better as well. Basically, it enhances every aspect that the normal human eye has by a multiple of up to 10. Of course, except for the field of view, since it's impossible to have more than a 360 field of vision. Naruto wonders if he can train to use those eyes too, similar to how he got the Sharingan without actually being a part of the Uchiha clan. Each tilt beast gave Naruto encouragement and one form of training that could help him unlock this ability. Naruto is now happy and motivated, so the same day, right when the three boys and the Hyuga girl left, Naruto started to train. First, he starts meditating to get into a better state of mind. Then, he pours chakra into his eyes without any anger or sadness, being careful not to trigger the Sharingan, because if he does, then his whole training is for nothing. The Sharingan and the Byakugan are basically opposites. One calm, the other angry. 
One fueled by relaxation and concentration, the other fueled by sadness and despair. After about a week of becoming more calm, relaxed, and heightening his senses and visual prowess without using the Sharingan, Naruto has now unlocked the Byakugan. Though he still needs a lot of practice using it, since his vision changed dramatically, which threw him off at the beginning. So much so that he fell to the ground, which even that looked a different color, and the aspect looked completely different. He would definitely have to get used to it, though he could manage since he somehow got Keke Genkai's with just training, which is completely unheard of for anyone else. So if anyone can do it, Naruto can. Three months later, Naruto at this point is trying to use his two dojutsu at the same time, which is proving to be difficult since, as I mentioned earlier, they are pretty much opposites. The right eye being taken up by the Sharmagon, and the left one filled with the grey whitish color of the Byakugan. Naruto is currently fighting against nine of his Tail Beast style clones, each one using one of the Tail Beast's consciousness, abilities, and chakra. So basically, Naruto is fighting against a heavily weakened version of each of the Tail Beasts, all at the same time, by the way. He Whilst fighting, he accidentally hurts the clone with the second Tail's consciousness, the Matatabi. He hurts her, which makes her bleed, and the clone effectively dies. Naruto is not thinking straight and is crying because he thinks that he killed Matatabi, who was like a older sister to him. The one who always looked out for him, always went careful with any harsh training that the others offered to do. She was always so careful, so kind. And now Naruto had killed her. Naruto goes wild and lets out some of his chakra, which would be picked up by people inside the village, such as Minato, if the tail beasts weren't trying their hardest to control and suppress Naruto's chakra. Naruto faints because for a five-year-old, seeing a comrade get injured like that because of his actions is too much for Naruto. When Naruto wakes up a few hours later, he notices that his eyes are burning. He decides to pour chakra into his eyes to try to stop the pain or at least make it milder, since somehow the tail beast healing isn't working. But he notices that instead of easing the pain, a Mangekyo Sharingan activates. The most powerful version of the Mangekyo, which was even able to control the QB, the nine-tailed fox, and make him attack the leaf village and almost kill his own Chichuriki. Now Kurama is actually scared, but is telling himself that Naruto would never harm the tail beast. They're his family. Naruto does not get blind from any usage of his new Jujutsu because of the tail beast's immense healing factor. Compiling onto him, the nine tail beast's healing is incredible. More than any medical known Jutsu could ever do. Even better than any Otsutsuki, it is well, perhaps not like an Itsutsuki, but it is incredible indeed. Almost like the Ten-Tailed Jinshuriki would have, if there ever was one, that is. Now Naruto is six years old and slowly preparing himself to go to the academy to become again, because the Tailed Beast told him that it was the right thing to do. He should learn social skills, understand people and talk to them and learn what it is really like to be a shinobi and start from the very ground, from nothing, from a mere child. And the tail beast did try to warn and train Naruto's mind because they know that not only is he gonna get bullied or try to be hurt because he's an apparent demon or monster, or tail beast, but also he's gonna be treated with a child, like a child. And Naruto, I don't want to say he has an ego, but he doesn't like being called a child or being treated like a child. Like I can imagine most people don't. Naruto is now about one month off from starting the academy life and is expanding his underground hideout, which he uses to sleep and the tailed beasts use at their base of operations whenever Naruto is busy on his own, mostly training. It's like their headquarters. Well, I mean, it is the only base of operations that they have, but if they had multiple, well, yeah, it would be the headquarters. 
Naruto mostly uses rock manipulation to make the rooms underground, bigger, more beautiful, some even with marbling, expand them into a whole mansion which anyone would be jealous of, and it's completely hidden from view from anyone outside, and only Naruto can get in since there is a seal blocking the passageway. Even if someone accidentally stumbled onto it, they wouldn't be able to open it. Unless, of course, they were exceptionally powerful. But that wasn't gonna happen. At least for now. Naruto is now, for the first time ever, slowly walking out of the forest of death that he had come to love so much, the plants and the animals inside of it, and, well, it is his home. And for the first time ever, he sees the actual village. The bright sun and the beautiful rooftops that some of the buildings have. There are villagers who pass along normally since they don't recognize Naruto. The only people who have ever seen him were, well, when he was a child. And even they would probably have a hard time remembering him and what he looks like. And well, of course, there is the factor that most people thought he was dead since he had been left in the forest of death for the past eight years from a mere baby to now a young, well, academy student, if you want to call it that. Naruto is now entering the academy backyard where there is but a few trees and one lonely sad swing. Naruto is getting instructions from the tailed beast as to where the building is, but mostly from the villagers, since he can't ask them without them being mean or aggressive towards him. Though that would probably change in a very, very short time, once they knew who he actually is. The tailed beasts were so kind, they even taught Naruto how to weave his own clothes, which is why Naruto, whenever he wants to, can just hunt for an animal and is able to make any type of clothes from him as he wants to. We cut back to Naruto opening the classroom door, and he sees Iruka, teacher, and most students, who were already in the classroom, sat down in their seats. Immediately, Iruka turns around to want to greet his new student that came in a little bit late, but then he sees the yellow hair, which is somehow familiar. He knows that the only person that, well, is near the village with yellow hair like that is... Me... Minato? He thought to himself, well that couldn't be, wait a minute, he had two children, he remembered. One, of course, was the beloved daughter, and one was N Naruto, that was the name, a yellow haired boy, but that couldn't be, could it? N Naruto Namikaze? Iruka said, slowly. Sorry, it's pretty hard to find this building, Naruto says. By the way, I don't go by that name anymore. I was abandoned by my family, and therefore, that's no longer my name. I'm just Naruto, so please call me that. Thank you. Namikaze? I'm the only descendant of the Namikaze clan. My father is the fourth Okage, and I'm his only daughter. He is the only Namikaze. Until I was born. Which means that you're lying. Mito said, sitting in the middle of the room. There's no other Namikaze but my father and me, so who really are you? Mito asked. As I said, just Naruto. So, let's be friends, yeah? <sighs> this is already tiring, Naruto says, as he lifts up his arms, bundling them together at the top, and his shirt slightly lifting up, so people can see his abs part of a six-pack, and everyone is astonished, especially the boys who are amazed, and the girls find it pretty attractive. But for now, Naruto sits down. The day goes as normal. Naruto sits with no one. He sits alone. He isn't per se hated by the teachers, but he does get some weird looks, and... Well, the students don't have a problem with him. They actually like him a lot. But on the next day, the students... Well, all the students except for Naruto have a weird 
lecture about how there are certain bad people and tailed beasts and monsters in this world. And that Naruto is one of them. And Iruka didn't want to give the speech or lecture, but he was forced to by Minato, who wanted to prove and show to everyone that Naruto is a monster who almost made his wife go maniac. So now the students don't know what to think of Naruto. Whilst he was eating lunch alone, the students had a lecture about him being a monster. Now the boys were a little bit disgusted and now had thoughts like, oh, that's why he's ripped. He just wants to kill people. And the girls were immediately turned off, though some of them still had doubts. I mean, Naruto seemed like a nice kid. He was smiling. He didn't have any evil intents. At least, he didn't show any yet. They just have to see. For now, the teachers, especially Iruka, would want to find out how strong their new students are, and how strong the future shinobi of the Hidden Leaf would be. So they went outside, not to the backyard, but to a training field, where they all gathered up with about three teachers, one Proctor, Iruka, and let's say Mizuki. The students would fight one-on-one -on -one to show their skills, battle smarts, strategies, and Keke Genkai, and so on. Although they weren't expected to have mastered or be in control of any of those things. The teachers just wanted to see if there's any well, special cases underneath those students. So the first match would be Mito Namikaze versus Sakura Haruno. And here, Mito would take the easy little W. She would destroy Sakura, since Sakura is pretty useless at this point. She's no ninja skills, and Mito, well, she had some, tra some training from Kushina and, well, Minato whenever he had time. Mito can do some tree walking and some very, very basic chakra control. But she does have some physical power too, so she is superior to Sakura though as she is rather knowledgeable for her age. Next fight, Shino versus Kiba. Shino wins this one too, since he has control over his bugs, whilst Kiba can just use Akamaru and run around the field. Nothing more, but nothing less either. They're both not bad, but Shino is shown to be much, much superior to Kiba in every way, shape, and form, even in speed, which is the Aburame specialty. And now, it would be Naruto versus Sasuke Uchiha. Everybody bet that Sasuke would sweep the floor with a newbie. Although some did have doubts, Naruto's physique was quite superior to Sasuke and matter of fact, anybody that they knew. But Sasuke did have the one Tomoe Sharingan. Yeah, in the story, he does have the one Tomoe Sharingan at this age, which is pretty impressive and is actually not quite but pretty close to his to his brother itachi but of course itachi is still superior but at this point the uchiha massacre didn't happen so sasuke was able to train with itachi and become stronger than he would currently would be in canon though he doesn't have that drive to seek revenge or anything really so their fight begins, and Naruto immediately rushes towards Sasuke, trying to hit him in the stomach. The Sasuke just barely dodges. Now Naruto wants to finish this match quickly, and shoots a barrage of kicks and punches, which wear Sasuke down incredibly fast. After only about 15 seconds, Sasuke's already feeling weak, until he lets out his Sharingan. Now he thinks he won. There's no way he Naruto can do anything. Now Sasuke can see all of his moves before they even happen. And before Naruto even activates his own Sharingan or Byakugan, which he could, and easily defeat Sasuke, he decides no. He'll defeat Sasuke fair and square, just like that, with his bare hands. 
and without even calling any of the tailed beasts chakra, Naruto goes mayhem and now uses about twice as much power in his kicks and punches as he was before, and even faster, and even more speed. Now he's truly going faster than people can even see. And with that, 10 seconds later, the fight was over, and Sasuke was laying on the floor. Now the Sharingan deactivated. I, I, I give up, Sasuke said. Therefore, Naruto was crowned the victor. Naruto now starts his somewhat normal academy life, going to each of his classes almost as if he was a regular kid. He wants to graduate as soon as possible though, but Minato doesn't want to let him. Minato thought that Naruto would be a hindrance to the students, and perhaps even a threat if he got out of control. He could hurt them psychologically and physically, and even the teachers. And the council decided that Naruto would be too dangerous to even be kept in the village. Though it was weird since they didn't feel any malicious intent or anything in fact. They didn't feel anything from Naruto. Not even the faintest, slightest amount of chakra was felt from Naruto. Anyway, Naruto doesn't really have any friends. And his family? Well, his family hasn't interacted with him either. Especially his big sister Mito, who doesn't trust him and dislikes him. The reason Mito doesn't know that she has a sibling, or even had a sibling, is because it's forbidden. It's a forbidden topic for anyone to talk about. It's seen as a tragedy of the Hidden Leaf, a failure by the fourth Okage, Minato himself. It was never to be spoken about, especially not in the presence of Mito or Minato. However, even through such discrimination, Naruto kept training in the woods with his tailed beast and his own self. Naruto was a good student though. He would never interrupt the class. He is smart and powerful as a shinobi too. Almost a perfect student for Iruka. Naruto, after or sometimes even before school, peeped on people's training and since he could control his chakra output, he was invisible so he could watch them without them noticing he was even there. He liked to watch the Uchiha boys, Itachi and Shisui, but also a Jonin, one of Mid Nato students, Hikashi Hatake, who for some reason also had the Sharingan, though when he was training or using it at all, it was rather apparent that Hikashi could not use it to its full extent, likely because he doesn't have any training and, well, he isn't an Uchiha at all. Now near the end of the school year, Naruto asked if he could participate in the Genin exams because he's more than ready and can show the world how powerful he is. The teachers are reluctant because the last person who passed the Genin exams after only one year of the academy life was Itachi Uchiha, a prodigy amongst prodigies, which made everyone believe it's impossible for normal people. The standard was put so high that it was unachievable. Naruto, however, knew he could count on Iruka, and when confronted to the topic, Iruka suddenly agreed. Iruka let it happen because he likes Naruto the most out of his class. Even though no one else does, Iruka kind of likes Naruto, though he has been scared whenever Naruto was training and had a somewhat serious look on his face. Without telling any of the other academy teachers, or the clan heads, or the fourth Okage, Iruka lets Naruto participate in the Genin exams, but only if he keeps his mouth shut about it and doesn't tell anyone about Iruka's favor and kindness, since Iruka could lose his job and honor as a teacher and shinobi. So, without anyone noticing, Naruto just squishes between all the other upperclassmen and does the exams like normal, just like they would. Naruto passes every exam with perfect scores, but no one knows it was Naruto because he couldn't say his actual name, so he called himself Kurama and hid his hair since it was one of his notable features that anyone could recognize. The name Kurama came because he was the first one to suggest taking the Genin exams before he was technically allowed to, since the academy was just underneath Naruto. It was way too easy for him, and a waste of time to be honest. 
It wasn't even enjoyable after about a week. After the exams are done, the results would be shown on a board in the hallway for everyone to see and how they rank between each other. Naruto was now seeing himself, an unknown student to everyone else, who took the exams like normal, on the top of the board in the hallway as a perfect student who passed the getting exams with perfect marks. He walked to his regular class, happier than ever, and smiled at Iruka with her eyes met, giving him a sign, I did it, as promised. And the unspoken words were carried through the air until Iruka noticed and understood. The classroom was more chattery today than ever. Everyone was discussing who the mysterious Kurama could be. Meanwhile, Naruto was happily talking and being congratulated by the tailed beasts who knew that Naruto could do it easily but were still very proud and supportive of him. After the lesson, Ruka told Naruto all the details to becoming a genin, such as where to meet the following day to get their sensei and where to get his headband since nothing was told to him because no one knew that Naruto was the one taking the exam by the name Kurama. Naruto got his headband as the last one, and on the next day, he made his way to the classroom where each Genin team would get their Jonin sensei. Meanwhile, a tailed beast style clone is attending Naruto's regular classes, at least for now. Since Naruto has much, much more interesting things to do, he's now developing his ninja life, doing something interesting, fun. He couldn't wait. Kurenai would be Naruto's teacher, along with her two other students, who, in this story, are Marin, an Uchiha who has already unlocked the Tutomu Sharingan at the age of 10, and Misu, who is from no shinobi clan, but has proven to have high intellect and battle smarts slash strategies. They all meet on training ground 12, where Kurenai wants everyone to introduce themselves so they can get to know each other but mostly the two newly crowned Genin are interested in Naruto, who is now under the name of Kurama. They all introduce each other, and when it's Naruto's turn, he basically gives no information about himself. He doesn't explain his clan or heritage, or his goals or strengths and weaknesses, he just says that he's Naruto, sorry, Kurama, and he's almost 7 years old, which surprises the two other Genin a lot. A seven-year-old being the top of the entire class, someone who has never even attended their class, is at the very top at the age of seven? This couldn't even be true. It, this had to be a joke. With shocked expressions on their face, they continued. Even the Kurenai was very shocked. Kurenai then explains that the next day they would have one final exam to test their powers where they would have to land one hit on Kurenai. On the next day, Naruto is the first one there, then Kurenai arrives, then the other two get arrive at the same time. The mini exam begins, Naruto explains that they need to work in a group to achieve the best effectivity. They need to work in a team to pass the exam since that is the true one and only goal of this test. The other two take Naruto's lead since they have no reason to distrust him. He seems smart, and strong and seems to know what he's doing, although he is much younger than they thought he would be. Naruto goes in for melee hits with speed that matches that of a high level Chunin, which greatly surprises Kurenai and catches her off guard. Then Marin, the Uchiha boy, activates a Sharingan to help out, and Misu was shouting out formations, attack pattern, and occasionally fighting along with the two melee attackers. And after only one minute of fighting, Kurenai is pinned down to the ground, declaring Genin team the victors of this test. Kurenai was very surprised at Naruto, not only at his ability to make his team work together and find out the teamwork aspect of this test, but also his incredible taijutsu skills, which is unlike she had ever seen, especially for his age. It could be probably said that it's stronger than might guy was at his age and even older than his age and might guy is known to be probably the strongest taijutsu fighter in all of the hidden leaf villages since that is his one and only speciality 
since he can't actually use any type of chakra at all. His whole life was dedicated to Taijutsu, and then there's this kid who seems to be able to unmatch him, or at least might be able to unmatch him once he grows up enough. Kurenai is happy to take her new team on as her students and getting team. They complete many D ranked missions faster than any other team as new as them could ever do through teamwork, speed, and precision. After only one week and a hundred D ranked missions, they request a higher difficulty of missions, which is granted without even thinking twice about it. Both Minato and Kurenai are very impressed and want to hone that team's skills even further, since that is the team that could become the whole Leaf's strongest team, especially Naruto, who is basically the team captain, the leader. Naruto's team, which is dubbed Team 6, would go on to fight bandits in a small village nearby, which would be their first C-rank mission, only about 10 kilometers or 6 miles away. After a little bit of walking, there would be much more bandits than expected, and they would start to circle them, come out of the bushes and the forest nearby. And now, Team 6 decides to also make a circle, but they're facing outside, so that each person got each other's back. At this point, Naruto goes ham, and after defeating two bandits, leaves the formation and rushes to every single one of the bandits, knocking one after the other out and leaving Team 6 of Konoha victorious, with many unconscious bodies around them. The whole team is in awe at Naruto's skill. He is almost like a young yellow flash. He could become the next Hokage if he continues at this rate. Once getting back from their mission and reporting their findings and results of the battles, Minato at this point got very suspicious of who Kurama truly is. Since they'd never seen him in the village or anywhere before he joined the academy, or well, didn't even join the academy, just appeared at the Genin exam out of practically nowhere. Minato made a deep analysis and met him face to face to find out who this Kurama character truly is and how he's so powerful and why. Naruto is called into the Hokage's office and Hiruzen and Minato are sitting there, now beginning to question Naruto. The first few are rather general questions. How old he is, what's his name? Basic questions that they really already knew. But Minato's last question was for Naruto, well, Kurama, to show his hair, which he had previously been hiding, and, well, to show his true chakra and aura which had been completely invisible, almost as if it didn't exist at all. Naruto didn't know what to do at this point except to follow their request, since, well, there was literally nothing else. He would just be super suspicious. So he did. He first stopped hiding his chakra signature, and the Hokage's jaw dropped. It was Minato's child. Naruto Namikaze. N n n n Naruto? Minato asked a little bit frightened. Thoughts were rushing through his head. How, how did he become so powerful? How, how did he become a Genin without anyone knowing? And it, it wasn't he at the academy literally at the same time? W what is even going on? It's me. Your son. Naruto responded. Even though Naruto didn't even see himself as Minato or Kushina's son anymore. After being kicked out of their family and basically the village, and dropped off in the forest of death to die, well, that's not his family anymore. His true family and friends are the tailed beasts which always have been kind to him, and even saved his life when he was a baby. And they trained him and taught him things that no one else could do. I, I, I had to do it. There is no other choice. You are not safe and you will never be safe around anyone, for anyone. 
you almost caused permanent psychological damage to your own mother. You're, you're a monster, and I have nothing else to say to you, Minato screamed. <sighs> Naruto, with one quick leap, jumped out of the window, onto the streets, and seemed to disappear. Naruto took the things important to him from his underground base slash bunker, and left some of his clones to keep track of things inside the village. It was no longer safe in the village for him, or his tailed beasts. And so, Naruto left. He left his village, he left Konoha, in search for somewhere better. Somewhere better for him, and somewhere better for Jinchuriki. And the tailed beasts, of course. While on his way running through the woods without a clear goal in mind, Matatabi, the second tailed, talked to Naruto and said that inside the hidden cloud, there is the second tailed Jinshuriki, as well as one other, the eight tailed Gyuki, the octopus, as some of the other tailed beasts referred to him as. They would both likely welcome Naruto, and even the Raikage, the leader of the hidden cloud would probably welcome him too, as they're both enemies of Minato. So Naruto was on his way now, and after only about three hours, he arrived at the Hidden Cloud. It was already the late afternoon, and the sun was starting to set. So immediately, he rushed over to the Raikage's office, where he was about to finish work for the day, when Naruto popped into the room. <laughs> Can I please have your help? What, what, what the? Who even are you? And how did you get here so fast? What, what, what are you? So many questions. Whatever, G can I stay at this village for some while? For a time, please? I, I can even do missions or something if you want, Naruto said. Well, we, we, we would appreciate someone doing more missions, but like, who are you? Explain yourself immediately. Okay, okay. I'm Naruto, sadly born to Minato. And when he said that, Raikage flinched. Minato? Nope, relax, relax. I hate him just as much as you do. Actually, he kicked me out of his family and basically even the clan. Well, he left me to die. He left me outside the village not really outside the village but in the forest of death you're likely familiar oh i see and what makes you think that you can live here well you have two other jinchuriki right what do you mean by other jinchuriki well i'm a jinchuriki too of uh the nine tails since that was the one that naruto was technically a jinchuriki of I see. And you want to live here, huh? Yeah, if that's alright with you. Okay, I'll have to think it over, but for now, you can have a hut. However, it's a little secluded, so I'm sorry for that. But you can sleep there. One of my Anbu will show it to you. Please don't leave the hut, or else we'll get suspicious of you. We'll come pick you up tomorrow morning. See you until then. Goodbye. And with that, their ways parted just as fast as they collided. Naruto is now in his hut where he just chilled until he heard a knocking on his door in the morning. There stood the Raikage himself, along with Killer B, the eight tailed Shinshuriki, as well as Yugito, the second tailed Shinshuriki. Naruto gulped and asked, Yes? Come with us, we will talk about your stay here along with the other village elders and other influential people in the Hidden Cloud, the Raikage said. Whilst walking back into the Raikage's office building, Naruto asked the two Jinchuriki if they had ever been discriminated, and they stopped walking and stared at the floor. Yes, but that is the life we have to bear. We have to be selfless as Jinchuriki, to take that burden, B said. Really, but... Shouldn't the Jinchuriki be celebrated as heroes if they're being so selfless? That's not how it works, and that's not how it'll ever be, be responded to Naruto's question. Okay, fair enough, Naruto said. 
Naruto continued walking, and so did the other two Jinshuriki. The small group arrived at the Reikagi's office, and the meeting began. This meeting is concerning the state of Naruto, born in the Leaf Village, and son to Minato Namikaze and Kushina Uzumaki. Killer B suggested that another Jinshuriki could be very useful for the Hidden Cloud. Yujito nodded. He made a good point. That is the push that could make them the strongest village of all the five shinobi villages, and especially decreasing the Leafs village power by a lot if they don't have any Jinshuriki at all. Because whilst the Leaf does have powerful shinobi such as Minato, the Hokage, or even some Jonin and Anbu, they can't make up the difference of three tailed beasts on their side. The Raikage agreed, but there would have to be some repercussions, to know that Naruto isn't a spy from the Hidden Leaf. Here, the Raikage would ask Naruto some questions, and Naruto would respond pretty correctly, but only the bare minimum that he was asked. He didn't give any information regarding his previous training, or that he's basically the Jinchuriki of all tailed beasts combined. Naruto would be under close supervision by Yujito and Killer B, as well as Anbu and anyone, well, any shinobi nearby. Naruto was happy though, whilst he did get looks from the villagers and shinobi walking by, because he was the talk of the town. For the first time in his life, Naruto was able to walk on the streets and able to go into shops and restaurants, like a normal kid, like a normal person, a human, which brought him joy and made him grateful of what he had now and what he had achieved in comparison to his miserable life in the forest, not even able to show his face anywhere in the village. Naruto asked the Raikage if he could do some ninja missions to earn money to get a bigger house as to not seem suspicious, since food and such was funded by the village himself to show hospitality towards their new asset, as Naruto is basically a weapon in form of a human. The Raikage agreed and Naruto could participate in ninja missions with Killer B and Yujito and his sides. A very powerful team. They were easily able to complete B and even A rank missions, sometimes with a little assistance even S rank. They were the attack team of the Hidden Cloud. Three powerful Jinchuriki. And if there were a mission for them to do, they would never fail. That team had a perfect record, and Naruto was not just sitting on the side. He was actually doing a lot of the work too, even though he just got introduced to the village and the shinobi team. However, in truth, Naruto didn't really need any money for a bigger house, except for something like food, which soon he would have to buy himself. The reason Naruto doesn't need a lot of money is because once again, by manipulating the elements such as rock and wood, yes, he can manipulate wood, he was able to make a hidden trapdoor inside his mini hut, and build a much bigger area underneath, much more comfortable and spacious. Naruto continued in his team for about a month and a bit, and was able to gain reputation that would place him along with the top Jonian, some of the strongest people in the hidden cloud, such as Killer B who had massive chakra reserves and was respected for such, as well as of course Karen the A-tailed beast. At this point, Naruto and the rest of his team were called to the Raikage's office. The Raikage explained that Naruto was officially still only a genin, which is why accepting missions like this is not very good as a symbol for their village. To let genin do hard missions it's not a good look on the Raikage, which is why the Raikage decided to send, to send Naruto to the tuning exams. But even that was kind of a problem since under the name Naruto, he never even passed the academy exams. However, anyway, Naruto should still participate in the tuning exams. Naruto would go along with B as his Jonin sensei and two other Genin. These were just Anbus, two Anbus, who never officially passed any of the tuning exams or anything higher than that. Which is why if they participated as a normal Genin, no one would suspect a thing, as long as they of course hid their true power. 
This was only to let Naruto pass since they had no interest in themselves becoming and getting the rank of Chunin. Yujito, in the meantime, who was the odd one out in the team, left alone, no role to do, could either go along to watch Naruto and, well, the two other Anbu participate in the Chunin exams or have some free time, and she decided to do a mix of that. She would have some free time until the final round of the Chunin exams, which she knew that Naruto would pass through. The whole thing would be a breeze to Naruto. She only wanted to see it and watch something interesting, where Naruto could actually show some power and strength. Yujito has been building up feelings towards Naruto ever since he rescued her from five Jonin class outlaws who hurt her while she was being careless and fighting alone. This was about two weeks ago. Naruto picked her up, asked if she was okay, and then eliminated all the outlaws in one quick scoop, and before Yujito even hit the ground, he picked her back up. I'm already back, Naruto said, with a smile on his face. By the way, before anyone says anything, Yujito is younger than in the original series here, okay? Just remember that. She is younger. Now she is still a little bit older than Naruto, but she's nowhere near the 29 years old that she was in the original series, okay? Just so you know. Nothing weird going on like that. Relax. Now let's continue. Back to the present. Naruto is now heading off with his team, Killer B and the two Anbu, who were going to play Genin, just for Naruto to be allowed to participate in the exams because, well, you need a full Genin team. They arrived at the Leaf Village with about three days to spare until the Chunin exams truly began. Naruto didn't go outside before the exams began since he didn't want anyone to see him or recognize him, so we skipped to the beginning of the first exam. Naruto immediately saw through the Genjutsu that was put one room after the entrance to confuse the, well, not so strong Gen and walked past it without saying a thing. The two Anbu followed him closely. I'll be calling them the two Anbus in the story, at least in this part, because I don't have names for them. So if you have good names in the comments, write them down because I don't, and I don't know if it's important. So anyways, let's go. Naruto begins the first exam after it had been explained to them by the proctor. The two Anbu know that they don't have to write anything in this exam because the real test is if they're willing to stick around to the, to the 10th question, which is only revealed to them at the end of the exam to test their team spirit and willingness to fight on. Naruto can do whatever he wants at this point since there's no way he's dropping out of the exam. Now for round two. That follows by Anko jumping in through the window of the room, where the first exam was taken. She tells everyone to meet in front of the Forest of Death, where Naruto gets flashbacks to his childhood, the place he grew up in. Realistically, he is still a child, but more mature and strong. Now Anko explains the exam, and everyone is ready to begin, and enthusiastic to begin. The exam begins with Naruto's team, which she is leading, taking a direct turn to the right to let all the teams pass by them so that they can pick at least one of the teams from behind to get their scroll and immediately win without getting into any further trouble. The plan works and Naruto by himself gets the scroll whilst the two Anbu pin down the other two team members of the team being picked off. Naruto's team can now make their way to the tower to finish off the exam and hand in their scroll and they arrive almost in an instant with a variation of the body flicker that the Anbu have basically mastered and Naruto can do at a pretty high level too. They are in fact the first team to complete the second round here and the fastest team to have ever completed the second exam of the Chunin exams in just 10 minutes. The second team is the first tailed beast Jinshuriki, the one tails Shukaku, who at this point isn't hostile towards Naruto and actually goes up to him to talk. Gara's team members are very surprised at this since Gara has never been one to talk, but Naruto and Gara go into a separate room where they talk. Shukaku being a loudmouth 
tells Naruto about a certain eye, a Renegon, that he should try to learn someday. At this point, by the way, Gara wasn't conscious, so he doesn't know anything of what's going on right now. And also, the only reason Gara is telling him this now is because, well, the memory was kind of sealed away inside Gara, and it didn't seem necessary at this point. But now, since Naruto is actually getting into some trouble here and there, he should get all the strength that he can. So, after these exams are done, Naruto is going to further investigate the Renegon and perhaps try to train it to get that one too. Gara, well, Shikaku, and Naruto now break off once more. Here, the preliminary rounds of the Chunin exams begin, which are held between the second and third exam. The third being the final one. At this point, Gara is fighting first against Lee, who they are pretty evenly matched, though Gara does win this one. However, he does win in a less brutal way than in normal story, because Shukaku is not out for blood as much as he usually is, especially now after talking to Naruto. Now, he's not, well, a calm Chinchuriki, well, tail beast. But, well, he is much calmer than usual, and actually letting Gara make decisions without influencing him on every second word that he thinks. So, Gara wins, but in a much more relaxed way. Then, Naruto is going on against Mito. By the way, again, no one knows that it's Naruto. Similar to when he was hiding as Kurama, now he's hiding as someone else not even named. So, yeah, no one knows it's actually Naruto. They fight, but realistically, Mito has no chance against Naruto. Naruto doesn't have to use the body flicker or his clones or any of the tailed beast chakra. He can simply, in a one-on-one -on -one physical fight, destroy Mito. He's faster, stronger, and more intellectual. His battle smarts are rather high. Which is why Mito, once more, has no chance. So here, Mito loses. Now, Marin and Misu. Naruto's old teammates, one Uchiha and one from No Shinobi Clan, are also participating in these tuning exams and are actually doing pretty well. However, Naruto will not be fighting against them. At least, not for now. Now that all the matchups have been decided, by the way, the two Anbu, they won their matches with ease, but are gonna throw the finals. They just wanted to have a little bit of fun, and, well, make Naruto's way easier for the finals. So now there would be a one month training period where Naruto would actually have the chance to further investigate that Renegon that Shukaku was talking about, and ask the other tail beasts. So with time on his hands, for two weeks straight, he practiced once more with his Sharingan. At this point, he was actually using his Mangekyo Sharingan. It's basically the internal, since it has all its features, but it's not officially an eternal. So yeah, he was using his Mangekyo Sharingan and trying new things that had never seemed possible, such as pulling and pushing matter, which isn't technically possible with his Sharingan. But he thought that since the Renegon is basically a better version of the Sharingan and a different version, perhaps the Sharingan could lead Naruto into possessing the Renegon, which he was somewhat right in. However, Naruto had to get closer to all six aspects of the Renegon. For example, one being the pushing and pulling of objects, one being about life and death, and also peace in the inner mind, which kind of cuts back to the Byakugan training that he did earlier. Well, not earlier, but a while ago. And with all of those things combined, on the 14th day of training, when almost finishing the training for the day, of course, not even close to giving up yet, Naruto's eyes, Naruto's Mangekyo, spinned and spun and spun and spun faster and faster and faster until the Tomoe looking black ink kind of objects in his eye turned and spun and spun and spun faster and faster until they 
elongated into small, thin lines, but there were much more than Tomoe. There were many of those lines, and the background, the color of the actual eye, turned from a reddish color to a more purplish or whitish, kind of similar to the Byakugan, but more on the purple side. Naruto used the rest of the training period to practice and train with the Rinnegan to actually be able to use it effectively. So now the training period is over. Naruto is now done with the one month training period, having gotten to a whole new level of strength. And with that, the finals of the training exams shall now begin. Yujito is there to watch now, and Anbu 1 and 2 are there too, to participate of course. Naruto enters the arena last, with arms in his pockets, nose up high. This was the day. The day where he would show the Leaf their wrongs, and not forgive them for their mistakes and cruelty. Naruto was stone cold and serious, more than ever before. Naruto was first up against Gara of the Sand. Whilst normally this would be a very difficult and a very annoying matchup, during the one month training period, Shukaku had been helping Gara get back on track and become a normal human again. Not annoying him and actually letting him get sleep. Yeah, privileged, am I right? Getting sleep. Anyways, Naruto did also meet up with Garo twice just to talk, and they understood each other pretty well, which is why they weren't going to try to hurt each other in this fight. They were bros, they were homies, they were friends. Garo wouldn't fight aggressively, and Naruto wouldn't use the full power of all of the tailed beasts or the Renegon. Their fight began, and unlike anyone could have predicted, the first thing both of them did was slowly walk to each other, and then when they met up in the middle, they shook hands, bowed, and then turned their backs on each other. This was signaling a fight. Whilst it is a friendly match, it is still a fight. Not in the arena, not in the tuning exams, but a fight not only between Genin, villages, or personalities, but a fight between Jinshuriki and Tailed Beasts. They rushed over to each other and their knees hit each other since their kicks blocked each other out, cancelling each other to almost a standstill, both staring into each other's eyes. They slowly started to throw punches and more kicks, but were speeding up at a rate so fast, non-shinobi in the audience couldn't even grasp of what's going on, because it was just a blur of two people. And slowly but surely, the chakra leaked out of the two fighters and seemed to take the form of monsters. The one behind Gara was yellow, orange, perhaps light brownish, colored. It was a beast with one tail, whilst the one behind Naruto had a reddish color with nine tails. And slowly but surely, their chakra apparitions and form of tail beast started fighting each other, also throwing kicks and punches. The beast behind Naruto was using his tail to create a kind of whirlpool or a tornado, meanwhile using his legs and mouth to attack. At this point, the fight escalated to above Joni level. A strong wind pressure could be felt all around the arena, and Minato and Kushina, as well as the other Jonin and Hiruzen, are now realizing that once again, Naruto is participating in these exams with a fake identity and name. Now Jutsu started to be used by the two human fighters, where Gara seems to be being pushed back ever so slightly, but at this point, Shukaku is briefly discussing their strategy to win the fight with Gara, when he offers up his chakra, rather more of his chakra. Gara now has the upper hand, but not for long, because Naruto is using even more speed and force in his punches, but that isn't enough, so Naruto is forced to use the Byakugan, which gives him an overview of the battle and allows him to see if Gara is charging up attacks or anything of the sort by looking at his chakra points and seeing if they're building up chakra or not, and if he's lucky, he can even knock out or temporarily paralyze Gara by hitting those certain chakra points and win the fight. Now the fight is evened out once more, and they make an unspoken rule to not use any new power or go all out. 
they will just fight out like this. Like true shinobi in a fair and even fight. After another two minutes of an intense battle, not only for the two fighters, well, four fighters, but even for the audience, Naruto finally wins the match. But in the end, they both fist bump and smile at each other. Gar is not unhappy that he lost at all, which would shock anyone that ever knew him, especially his siblings. However, this was the best way the fight could have gone. Meanwhile, the proctors of the final of the Chunin exams, who determine who becomes Chunin, have no other choice but to accept Naruto and Galra as Chunin, and if they could, they would even write them down as Jonin. They are still very young, especially Naruto, who is new and 8 years old yet, and have so much potential. They could pick up, well, Kage, perhaps even more. Perhaps as legendary as Madara Uchiha. These two are, are, are incredible. Yujito, who was watching the whole fight, is proud of Naruto and the power he displayed in the match, which was also representing the Cloud Village and its power. Naruto is therefore through to the quarterfinals of the Chunin exams. However, all the other Genin watching this match were now afraid. If they were ever going against Naruto, or, well, they didn't quite know it was Naruto, but some of them had their suspicions, such as Shikamaru, who could put two and two together. Well, they would never want to go against a beast like that. He was basically the human form of a tailed beast. He was a real-life monster with insane chakra, endurance, speed, and force. There was nothing a Genin or even a Jonin could do against those guys. Now the second round was Marin Uchiha versus Anbu 1. Now the Anbu didn't really care if he was going to win or not as I explained in the last episode. So he's going to let himself, well, lose. But not going to make it too obvious since he doesn't want to, well, drag attention. But he makes himself lose and that's it. Marin's through to the quarterfinals too. Now it's a similar matchup with Misu, Marin's teammate, who's now fighting against Anbu too. Same story, the Anbu doesn't have a will to fight and makes his way to leave. Well, not leave, but lose in a non-spectacular way, not dragging any attention to him, his team, or the hidden cloud. By the way, one thing to note is that the original Konoha 12 that we know aren't watching. It's, well, they're watching, but as academy students, not fighting and participating as Geni. Just so you know that. Anyway, the fights continue, and now we arrive at the quarterfinals of the training exams. Here, the fight will be Naruto against Marin. This will be truly a strong fight. Marin, who by now has unlocked the three Tomoe Sharingan, not even unlocked it, mastered the three Tomoe Sharingan at a very young age, is now fighting against Naruto, who just a few minutes ago displayed incredible chakra and strength. People were curious, but Naruto had much better feats to go off, which is why a lot of people thought Naruto, or what they, well, what they didn't know was Naruto, but Naruto would probably win, and they were right. Naruto had much more endurance and speed, and even their Sharingan, whilst Naruto was not using anything, any dojutsu, could still outmatch Marin easily. Although he was pretty strong for a Genin, Naruto was stronger. Much, much stronger. By the way, if you're wondering why Minato hasn't yet stopped the exam because Naruto's there, well, the only reason he hasn't stopped everything is because it would put a bad name on not only Minato, the fourth Okage, but the whole Leaf Village. But after this, you already know Minato's gonna flip out and search for Naruto 
and well try to do something now we skip all the way to the semi-finals where naruto is now facing off misu his other former teammate while she does have quite some chakra her speciality is strategy and battle smarts which she does have a lot of she has a lot of strategies mesmerized and can think of anything on the spot which helps with her on a team but also when she's fighting alone since it is even easier to make a strategy when there's no other hindrance or variables of people she is very smart you can just conclude it like that she is quite smart but naruto is awfully smart too which cancels out their intelligence which means that now comes down to strength and speed and chakra which Naruto is superior of in every way possible. They start fighting, and Misu tries to go for the long range attacks, but Naruto is just way too fast and comes right up to her face and punches her in the stomach with such force that could knock out a normal grown man. Though she holds on, jumps back, and tries to regain balance but before she knew anything happened naruto was already there and punched her once more and then slammed her to the ground naruto didn't want to hurt her yet somehow felt some form of hatred she was kind of a symbol for the hidden leaf i guess but that didn't justify hurting her like that naruto had bad feelings about it and did want to apologize after the match ended and after the whole tuning exams ended now we see ourselves in the finals of the tuning exams where naruto should be facing off his final opponent however something weird and unexpected happens once more and a message is played through the loudspeakers all around for everyone to hear one of the final contestants for the final match cannot attend for he is feeling unwell this is why we have brought a replacement and out comes shisui uchiha a young but very promising and quick shinobi he's also smart but very quick has basically mastered the sharingan and is extremely precise with any throwing items such as shuriken or the kunai. Whilst well, Naruto was very surprised that Minato and the Leaf Village would try something so obvious and dumb to try to get Naruto out and make him look stupid or weak, Naruto was still sure of himself that he could win even against somebody as strong as Shisui Chiyo, one of the most promising people in all five villages. Naruto still had a very good chance of winning, even though he'd I'd have an age inferiority. Naruto, however, in this fight, would likely need to use the Sharingan, since Shisui can use it to its full extent. It's gonna be hard to make up the difference without using the Sharingan too. So their fight begins, and immediately Shisui jumps back, uses the three Tomoe Sharingan, and then goes back in for a fight. He makes a fireball jutsu, but is so fast that he goes in front of the jutsu, tries to hit Naruto in the stomach, then dodges his own fireball and lets it hit Naruto. Usually this would have knocked out any shinobi and caught them off guard, but Naruto saw it coming since he was now using the three Tomoe Sharingan too. W what the? As now Shisui is in the defense, because a hidden jutsu came up from the ground and tried to grab Shisui's legs. How the hell do you have a Sharingan? And, and, and three Tomoe? At your age? What the hell is this? Wh who are you? So many questions. <laughs> uh, I'm Naruto. And you are a loser. So I'm gonna give you that title of losing to me. Which is an honor if you think about it. But it will be a painful defeat. A pitiful one at that. So sit back, relax, and see your honor crumble in front of your eyes. Naruto's speech 
a not even eight-year-old speech, scared Shisui to the bone, his aura intimidating as ever, and his words carefully crafted. Naruto was a menace to any shinobi at this point, even a Kage-level threat. Naruto, well, you know, Naruto would take care of it. Shisui was now in the defense as Naruto was using one jutsu after the other, each one different than the last, for Shisui not to be able to copy it or understand the jutsu with his Sharingan before the next one even came and try to hit him. This combined with physical attacks, Shisui had no chance until he turned his 3 Tomi Sharingan into the Mangekyo Sharingan, which yes, in the story I'm gonna say he did unlock for he had more training and he is still alive, so he is older. So yeah, he got his Mangekyo Sharingan. By the way, I don't know if I need to say this again, but the only reason he is alive and the Uchiha clan is alive is because Minato stayed alive. So I guess that is a plus, but yeah. Naruto did the same and turned his three Tomoe into an EMS. And therefore, he won the game. He won the match and won the tuning exam, since Shisui had nothing else to compare to Naruto's EMS. And even if he did, Naruto would just grab another one of his crazy abilities and outmatch Shisui. So they had no choice but to give Naruto the chance, but the title of Chunin. And a lot of people, even in the audience, thought that Naruto sh deserves the title of Jonin. And Gara was also made to the title of Chunin, by the way. Naruto is now crowned a Chunin and given a Medal of Honor to signify his winning of the Chunin exams. But before he can even leave the arena victorious, Minato stopped him as he was nearing the gates of the arena, which served as the entrance slash exit. Minato grabbed Naruto's shoulder, who was currently walking out, and said, you're not leaving this arena with that medal. Is that clear? You're worse than any monster, tail beast, or Jinchuriki. Even that sand brat Jinchuriki deserves it more than you. So give it and we'll give it to somebody else, okay? Minato was furious that not only Naruto snuck into the exams once more without anybody knowing, but he won. He took the medal. Naruto tried to trick around and play around with the situation to somewhat make Minato even more angry and see his wrongs. At this point, Minato tried to slap Naruto. That backfired. Naruto blocked the slap easily with one hand and now had a serious tone and look on his face. Minato now almost started whining, asking why Naruto would betray him. Naruto should stick to his own village, the Leaf Village. He should support his own people, the Uzumaki, Namikaze clan, but also the others, the Uchiha, the Hyuga, and so on. And all the non-Shinobi too, since he needs to be fighting for them. Naruto should have been on top of the hate, like a real Shinobi, and harden it out, and become the strongest with real methods, not become a monster like he is now. Minato shed a tear whilst screaming, Why? Why me? Naruto turned his back, and without saying anything, he left, walking at the same pace as he did normally, still with the medal around his neck. Gaara went with him, and after a brief talk and discussion about the fight they had just earlier, Naruto left and went back to his new village, the Hidden Cloud, along with his teammates, the temporary two Anbu, and his real team members, Killer B and Yuji Toni. After only three hours of travel, they arrived back and reported to the Raikage. The Raikage was happy about the results of the shooting exams, especially that, well, Naruto won, giving the Cloud a good name, and he got the title of Chunin, which is all they could have hoped for. Meanwhile, Minato was sitting in the Hokage's chair in the Hokage office, basically having a mental breakdown being depressed about the situation that he's in. One of his sons is a monster who made his wife almost turn crazy forever. His daughter is way less powerful than she could or should with the kind of training that she had gotten. 
by legendary shinobi such as the Okage. And he can't be a father to anybody. He's the Hokage. And now he's hated by the Hidden Cloud and probably more as well. Naruto is now part of a village with three Jinchuriki and happier than he would ever be in the leaf. Only eight years ago, Minato and Kushina were the happiest couple possible, soon giving birth to two children, which would change their life forever, mostly for the worst. Especially the night that they were born on, the night of the Night Hills attack, which changed the whole atmosphere of the village forever. Naruto got some sleep, and then the next morning, Yujito knocked on its door. She asked if she could come in, and Naruto agreed. They both sat down on his bed, a little bit awkward. By the way, this is now a bigger house than the small shack that Naruto received from the Raikage. Naruto was able to afford this from the missions that he completed and the money he received for them. Yujito looked happy, but also serious. What is it? Naruto asked. I, 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 I need to tell you something, Yujito said. By the way, Yujito at this point was 12 years old, no older, just so you know. I love the way you find the tuning exams. That's what you wanted to tell me? No, of course not. Yujito said that after punching Naruto on the head. I wanted to say, I, I, I think I love you, Naruto. Yujito said eagerly, waiting for a response while splashing. Um, that's what you wanted to say then? Well, of course. I love you too, Yujito, Naruto said. What, really? Of course. You're just so beautiful. Um, thank you? Yujito responded shyly. By the way, wanna grab something to eat? I'm starving. I didn't eat yesterday evening. I probably should have before going to bed. Well, sure then, let's go. So they go and get some food. Since they have the money to get whatever they wanted at this point. At this point, the tail beasts are almost crying over joy that Naruto, from living in a forest abandoned alone, left to die. Naruto has now found someone so special in his life that he cares about, invites to, to eat, and has fun with. Not just that, but the whole village actually accepts him as a person. They grab some food, and Naruto, when looking at the bill, is surprised and asked Yujito if she really ate that much. Yujito punched Naruto on the head again and says that she needs to eat those calories to stay in shape and healthy, and that she didn't actually eat that much because the training would negate it. So it's fine, she wouldn't get fat. If you say so. Naruto pays the bill, and they go for the walk. They have some free time because they're currently off shinobi duty. Naruto asked if she wanted to go to an amusement park. A little ways away. Yujito agreed since she hadn't done something fun for a while, especially not with Naruto. Which at this point could invite her to do anything and she would agree. Naruto told the shinobi guards at the gate that they were leaving for a while. And so, they walked through the forest and after about 10 minutes, they arrived at an amusement park. It was basically in the middle of a forest, which is why it had such a magical feeling. There are many attractions in the park, some more dangerous like a roller coaster, whilst others were much more romantic like the ferris wheel. So what do you want to do first? Naruto asked. Yujito grabbed his hand in response and rushed over to the closest roller coaster, dragging Naruto along. She had never been to one, and wanted to experience it, since she had heard that it's very fun. They paid the fee, and strapped themselves in, and the ride began. It went as fast as a kunai when thrown by a professional. The roller coaster was much faster than expected. It went up at about 50 miles per hour, or 80 kilometers an hour. After they got off from the ride, Yujito's legs were kind of shaky, and at that point, she took one step. There was a stone in her way, however, which made her foot bend and twist in a way that hurt, which is why she fell down on the floor. Are you okay? Naruto yelled. Yeah, I'm fine, she responded. Without asking, Naruto picked her up and carried her like a princess whilst looking into her eyes. They went to the ferris wheel next, where they had much more relaxed time, and she was able to lie down 
on one of the benches inside. Yujito's foot stopped hurting that much at this point. They continued and went from ride to ride and had much more fun than expected. The sun was now setting and they started to make their way back when Yujito tripped on the same stone once again. This time Naruto was able to catch her before she fell down into the mud that was in front of her. Naruto carried her the whole way back to the village, same as he did earlier. She was safe and sound and felt better than ever. Naruto did tease her a little bit about being a high ranking shinobi and jinchuriki but somehow still falling and stumbling over the same rock twice. Yurito was happy though, and if she knew that Naruto would carry her like princess every time she tripped, she would do it much more often. They arrived at the gate and the guards were surprised, but kinda liked it. The two prodigies of the hidden cloud seemed to have a relationship going, and they smiled at Naruto and gave him a thumbs up. Naruto smiled back and they let him in. Of course, in only a week, the whole hidden cloud now knew that Naruto of the Leaf and Yujito Ni are now partners and in a relationship. Even though that relationship is awkward at times, though Naruto handles the situations like a pro and is the leading figure, the dominant one, in the relationship. Whenever they would go out to get some food, everybody would be looking at them interested in what they would do next as they were the most promising children and young shinobi in the entire village. And everybody would smile at them, and sometimes even try to give them advice. Now Naruto, Yujito, and Killer B were once again like normal, called to the Raikage's office to actually do some shinobi work. However, this was something special, an S-ranked mission. The three along with five other strong shinobi and three anbu were all called to do this one mission the mission it was to capture five low kage level fighters one of these one of the more known ones was zabuza momochi one of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist so they set out on the same day and the other team members even though they'd heard of naruto's legendary strength they were a little bit cautious, taking an 8 year old along on an S ranked mission, that's not usually a good idea, but they trusted the Raikage's judgement, so they were gonna go along with it. They finally arrived at a spot where they could see all 5 of the Kage level fighters, who for some reason were all gathered in one spot. They had already made a strategy before they even left the village, which is why they immediately knew what to do and started their fight. The Joni first rushed in with the help of the Anbu backing them up to try to apprehend as many people as possible. And after the commotion stopped about 10 seconds later, the advancing team, Killer B, Yujito and Naruto would continue and grab the others before they had a chance to escape or fight back. The strategy didn't quite work, because whilst Naruto was trying to get one of the guys, Killer B and Yujito were fighting another, but then Yujito was taken hostage, and the fighting immediately stopped. There were to be no casualties, especially not on the Hidden Clown's villa's side. Yujito was just a young girl, even though yes, yeah, she was a shinobi. She was still a child. Which is why even the quote unquote bad guys didn't really want to hurt her. But it was their only way to get out of this situation. Don't hurt her, and we'll stop following you, okay? We'll go right back to our village, promised, Kilabi said. I don't think you're telling the truth, Zabuza said. Perhaps we should take her with us as an insurance. One of the others said. What was that? Naruto asked. What, do you have something against it, brat? If I have something against it? Of course I do. She's mine, and mine alone. Is that clear? Naruto got angry and started releasing some of the Tail Beast chakra. Not just theirs, but his own chakra. Started leaking out. It was worse than any of the tailed beasts. 
it gave everyone nausea from just feeling it, and some of them even felt disoriented. Naruto activated KCM2 immediately and rushed the hostage taker, and immediately jabbed a kunai through his stomach, fatally wounding him. Then the fighting continued, and Naruto was able to, on his own, take out three of the Kage level fighters. But the thing that mattered to him most was that Yujito was safe, and she was safe indeed. She was pretty scared, but she would be okay. No injuries. So, the results of the battle was one fatality on the opponents of the Hidden Cloud side, but nothing else. The other four were taken prisoners and were then questioned about their plans and everything to do with them. The Raikage was pretty happy at the results, though he doesn't want Yujito to get in any trouble, which is why he was thinking of perhaps he was overestimating her. Perhaps she isn't quite ready for these kind of missions yet. He didn't say anything out loud though, he would have to overthink it. Perhaps even asked Naruto or Killer B, who had a lot of experience fighting with her side by side, and could probably determine her skill best. Especially Naruto, who recently was getting more and more closer to her. Though at least Naruto was there to save everyone. And at this point, Naruto and Yujito decided to take a break from their shinobi duties. Yujito would continue training and training harder and training with Naruto since she knew that that way she would get much more powerful too. And Naruto could even teach her something about Matatabi, her tailed beast, which she couldn't quite control yet. Even though Matatabi was a very kind, not very stressful, angry or hateful tailed beast. And Naruto, and of course Yujito as well, would continue their relationship and deepen their bonds. However, that doesn't mean Naruto would stop training. He would continue his practice and perhaps try new things, learn new jutsus, and deepen his bonds with the tail beasts even further. However, the thing that they wouldn't do is do any shinobi missions or any work at all. They requested a train period and it was granted to them with no question. They were still young and so having them basically drop out as a shinobi now for one or two years would benefit the whole village a lot in the future, which is why it was basically an investment. So the Raikage personally had a certain budget and funded their, well, their next few living months and years. So, if you haven't figured it out yet, this is where the Shippuden time skip happens. Killer B is currently reporting his mission report to the Raikage, as he now has a Genin team that he's leading as their Jonin Sensei. At the moment that Killer B just finishes through his report, suddenly Naruto and Yukito appear in the room in front of them. N -n -n Naruto? Is that you? Y you're here? Does this mean your training is finished? The Raikage added. Well, yes, I'm back. Me too, Yujito said, after having felt like she was excluded from the warm welcome. Who are you? You're so young and budging into our important conversation. How dare you? One of Killer Beast's getting students yelled. Whoa, bro, relax. You're just a getting, aren't you? Naruto said. I'm the strongest getting ever, and I'll be the strongest shinobi ever. You should bow down to me. The young Genin yelled. Oh, I'm sorry, Naruto said as he was now on his knees, bowing down. Naruto, you don't need to bow to him, the Rekage said with a smile on his face. Okay, sorry, Naruto said, a little bit sad. You don't have to say sorry so much, the Rekage said with a sigh. Naruto, just be like you used to be, Killer B said. Oh, okay. Haha, <laughs> it's been a while, huh? Naruto said, it sure has. So who exactly are you? The other student of Killer Beasts asked. This is a friend of mine. His name is Naruto. And he is a little bit younger than you guys. But he's very, very powerful. Killer Beast said. That's right. My name's Naruto. And I'm a shinobi. Just like you. 
so are you a genin too? And then who's who's your sensei? Is it that girl? She looks older than you. Oh no, she's just my girlfriend. I'm not a genin anymore. I'm actually a chunin now. You're a chunin? But you're you're younger than me. How is that possible? The bratty kid responded. Well, who knows? Maybe you haven't been training enough. Naruto said as a joke. I train a lot, I'll have you know. More than you could ever imagine. Alright, if you say so. It is currently Naruto's 10th birthday, which he celebrated earlier in the morning with Yujito having a cake for breakfast. Which means that it happened over two years since Naruto last did any shinobi missions, and it happened roughly one year since Naruto saw or talked to anybody else than Yujito. The same goes for Yujito, of course. They had decided to seclude themselves from the village and fully focus on themselves and their training. Naruto, when now walking along the street, is openly welcomed by all the villagers once he starts to take a walk hand in hand with Yujito like he used to. At this point, Naruto and Yujito grab some food, but of course with Killer B to catch up, since apparently B had a lot to talk about. Last time they saw each other, he did not have a guinea team. Killer B explained that he had a, enough of just doing missions since at some point they become a little bit repetitive, and so he willingly decided to become a Jonin instructor for the next generation of Genin. Killer B now had been a Genin team leader for about a month, so he didn't have that much time to get to know them and didn't have that much experience teaching but he had a rough knowledge of who they are and how they think, since it is important to learn how to work with your team, especially if you are the sensei. Killer B explained that one of them, the one that screamed at Naruto at the beginning, well, he's cocky, but is training constantly, trying to get stronger and whoop, sorry, one up his other teammate. The quiet one, but with a lot of talent. And whilst he does have motivation, it's nowhere near the first kids. And then there was a girl on the team. She was an average student. She had kind of the brains of the team. And was always aware of the situation and thinking everything ahead. Basically planning the whole thing. For about an hour, Naruto and Yujito mostly listen to what B has to say rather than talk themselves. Then, when Naruto is individually called to the Raikage's office, picked up by Nanbu, he leaves and lets Yujito and Killer B talk by themselves. The Raikage explains that he would have made this offer much earlier, but thought that Naruto was a little bit too young. But now, he was ready. So, the Raikage offered for Naruto to join the Anbu and work on the shadows and save people as a shadow, as a ghost. Naruto thought about it for the whole night, and could hardly get any sleep. He had an awfully serious expression, which is why Yujito, who was sleeping in the same bed as Naruto. By the way, before I continue, there's nothing sexual going on there, okay? They're children. Let me say that again. They are children. Okay? Nothing weird. Their boyfriend or girlfriend. But they are still children. Just having said that. Okay. Yujito asked him what's wrong, and Naruto said that he was fine and that nothing was bothering him, which made Yujito upset. After over two years of a relationship, Naruto still wouldn't let her know everything that he's thinking about. So when she hit him on the head again, like she always did when she didn't like something, Naruto cracked, and he told her that he got an offer from the Raikage himself to join the Anbu, and she jumped up, now a little bit angry at the Raikage, saying that Naruto was too young to experience this kind of life, and she herself didn't want Naruto to experience this kind of life and become an Anbu, since he would likely change, and not be the one, the boy that she loved so much. Whilst Naruto is 10 years old, Yujito is 14, so she wanted to protect Naruto from the sadness and sorrow of the world, 
even though she knew that Naruto is stronger than her, physically at least. Yujito explains that they should first get a feeling for being a shinobi again, after two years of having a break. So Naruto could slowly dive into being a shinobi before immediately becoming a heartless, killing, brutal Anbu. Naruto agrees and on the next day, he tells the Raikage that he refuses his offer and just wants to be a normal shinobi, for now at least. The Raikage is fine with this decision as he couldn't force Naruto to do it, so he hands him a mission anyways, a regular mission. However, it is a pretty difficult one. He's supposed to do this mission with a few other people. Kind of like the s rank mission that they was part of two years ago. Just that this mission was dubbed A+, instead of S. Which means the mission is slightly easier, but still way too much to handle for one person. At least, a normal person. Naruto makes his way along with Yujito, B, and four other Jonin. They're to head out and bring back assassins and mercenaries dead or alive, which had been growing in popularity, getting more and more offers from rich people especially living in the area. However, the mercenaries had also been growing in numbers and power, recruiting new people, powerful people. B was appointed as the leader of this mission, but he still had a feeling that Naruto wasn't going to obey his orders since that's kind of his thing which is why he told the whole team to take a slower approach in case Naruto leaves the formation, they could still back him up, protect themselves, and protect each other. B's intuition was right, kind of, but also wrong. He didn't expect Yujito to leave formation with Naruto and follow him. I guess over the many months, she became more like Naruto, huh? B thought to himself. B was about to shout for them to come back, but they were just too fast. In the blink of an eye, Yujito and Naruto had both activated their tail beast chakra and gone somewhat serious mode. Naruto split up into tail beast style clones to cover more areas and immediately disappeared from everyone's field of vision. Yujito also disappeared, but just did a normal body flicker, not using any clones fighting on her own. Yujito had never been a big fan of using clones. Although if she ever did, she would use perhaps a mist cyclone, which doesn't use a lot of chakra and is easier to make. Because she thought that it's much more fun to fight yourself and, well, it's just cool. Each of Naruto's clones, however, had insane speed, matching that of Shisui, or even getting a little bit close to Minato. And he had taijutsu abilities as powerful as Madara. By the way, this was every clone. She was currently using nine different clones, so ten in total, including him. Naruto was indeed also using his Byakugan and Mangekyo Sharingan at the same time, also in every clone. Each clone was therefore using two dojutsu, which allowed Naruto to be able to look through every single one of his clone's eyes. So basically, he had 10 different fields, fields of vision, each one with a Mangekyo Sharingan and Byakugan. And I think you can imagine how OP that truly is. He basically has 20 eyes, each one with a Dojutsu, and a powerful one at that. Naruto was able to single-handedly take out about 85% of the mercenaries, and 15% were handled by Yujito, and the rest, well... There was no rest, but if there was, the other Jonin would probably take care of them. However, they were very useless in this point and in this mission. The Jonin report back the results of the mission with a sad look on their faces. They let a 10 and 14 year old do their A plus rank mission for them. Their planning and preparation was all for nothing. All of this just for two kids who one of them isn't even old enough to be a genin, do probably the hardest mission that had been assigned to the Hidden Cloud in the past month. The Raikage, however, was intrigued by these news. The training period had truly helped Naruto achieve a new level of strength. Same goes for Yujito, of course, though for now he was focusing on Naruto. 
Perhaps Naruto and Yujito are ripe to participate in the Jonin exams? The Raikage asked. The Jonin exams? Yujito asked. Well, both of you are still only Chunin, which is nowhere near the title that you deserve, the Raikage explained. Naruto and Yujito agreed with Raikage's standpoint, and so also agreed to take the Jonin exams, although they had never actually heard of the Jonin exams. They didn't even know how to become a Jonin. The Raikage then explained that part of it was a written test, of course, though that was only a small part, and realistically, if you failed that, you still had a pretty good chance of becoming Jonin if you did the rest well enough. So that didn't really matter too much, though officially speaking, they would still have to do the written test. Then usually comes a one-on-one -on -one fight between a Jonin and, well, the quote-unquote wannabe Jonin, the ones taking the test. This is usually a strong Jonin, though in this case they were going to make an exception. They were going to have all of the Jonin in the entire village team up against Naruto and Yujito. So basically the power couple against the entire village. Well, a big part of the village. At first, that idea sounded ridiculous to the Jonin still standing in the room. But once they thought about it, Naruto is strong. And Yujito is too. They could actually do it. Especially with their tailed beasts. It might actually be a close fight. So, a message was sent out to all shinobi to watch, and especially the Jonin because they had to participate. So, only half a week later, the, the Jonin exams customly started and made just for Yujito and Naruto to pass would now begin. The written test was already over with since they did it a day earlier, just to get it out of the way, since it didn't really matter when they did it. Naruto got 100% on the test, and Yujito got about 85, which is still very, very good. Then, the fight came around, the team fight, all Jonin against the power couple. Before the fight began, Yujito and Naruto turned on their tailed beast cloak and started powering up. Naruto now turning on both of his dojutsu, which had been hidden from the public, so everyone, even the Jonin, who didn't know about it, had a shocked expression on their face. There was only a select few that Naruto had told this to, and he didn't even tell them at the beginning, he only told them like three months after he joined the village. So Yuji Tono's, Killer B, the Raikage, and a few others, but not more than that. And of course Yuji Tō also knows stuff like the bunker that Naruto made, just for fun, because well, Yujito at this point knows Naruto better than anyone, since, well, she had been his girlfriend for over two years now, and had been living with him for two years. Now the Jonin started preparing themselves too, and then the fight broke out. Naruto immediately cut off half the Jonin from the others, and Yujito went back to back with Naruto, each one now facing exactly half of the Jonin which was 6 Jonin each by the way, so in total there was 12 to fight. 6 Jonin now on each side. And without saying a word, Naruto basically started their combined attack. So, what no one could have predicted is that instead of fighting the ones that they were already facing, Naruto and Yujito both turned around and jumped basically backwards, fighting their team members' opponents which already gave them an advantage since it shocked their opponents and even the audience, who wasn't expecting it. Naruto at the beginning immediately put two of the Jonin into a Genjutsu with his Mangekyo Sharingan. Then with his Byakugan, saw a Jonin trying to sneak up on him and immediately 180 turned around and punched him in the stomach. Naruto's speed and strength was basically increasing more and more. Not because of any special power, but because Naruto was letting loose. And Yujito, well, her fight wasn't 
as easy as Naruto's, but she was still managing. And that is a feat on its own. A 14 year old holding off six Jonin. That is crazy. But it was true. And then once again, Naruto and Yujito switched opponents, which was unexpected and shocked their opponents once again, catching them off guard. Now Yujito was able to take out two more, and Naruto was able to take out one. So at this point, they knocked out about half of their opponents. And now Naruto and Yujito would be teaming up, now not fighting individually, but as a team with combo attacks. So whilst each of the Jonin was doing different hand seals for different jutsus, well Naruto was following Yujito's lead, and they both, with just their mere fists, were able to punch, slap, and kick everyone in their way, until they were the only two still standing in the arena. They did it. They truly won against all of the village's Jonin. The Raikage started clapping and slowly walking towards them. You did it. You truly did it. That was quite an impressive fight there. At the same moment, Naruto released his Genjutsu, waking the two Jonin up from earlier once again. Now, what about fighting me though? The Raikage asked rhetorically. Of course. Though... How about we make this a one-on-one -on -one fight? Naruto responded rock-cockingly to the Raikage's question. What? You want to fight me, the fourth Raikage, in a one-on-one -on -one battle? You do realize that I have a clear advantage in experience, height, and speed. This fight would be suicide for you. You'd not only lose the fight, but You'd lose your undefeated record, your honor. Are you sure you want to do this? We'll see about that. So let's fight. Or are you scared? Don't mock me. And just know that you wanted this fight, Naruto. Is that clear? In one quick motion, A, the fourth Raikage, pulled out a kunai and tried to hold it to Naruto's neck to show his superiority without actually hurting him. But before he was able to, Naruto stood behind him. I think you dropped this, Naruto says, was tapping on the Raikage's shoulder, showing him the Raikage's headband in Naruto's hand. He was able to snatch it whilst he wasn't looking and paying attention. W what the? How are you that fast? I'm the fastest in all villages except for that damn Minato. So how the hell are you faster? Tell me! Hmm, who knows. But... Now, do you really want to fight? And this time, don't do anything stupid, and take me on seriously. Now their fight would truly begin, and the arena, which was currently still filled with Jonin and Yujito, emptied quickly. They were afraid of what's going to happen next. Two monsters, two god of shinobi, fighting. Naruto and the Raikage were facing off, and then, the fight was declared to start. Naruto turned on his Renegon for the first time in a fight ever, as he had a plan to use its push and pull abilities to fight against the Raikage, and negate his incredible speed. Even though Naruto would probably try to outmatch him, even if they just fought with pure speed. However, in the strength and power aspect, the Raikage was likely superior as he had more experience using his style. So, immediately when the Raikage started rushing to Naruto, everything seemed to have happened in slow motion due to Naruto's incredible visual prowess gained from the Renegade, and just the sheer training that Naruto's eyes developed over the years of using three different dojutsu and mastering them all. Naruto pushed the Raikage back when he got up to about halfway between the initial distance between Naruto and the Raikage who had moved to opposite sides of the small arena. After having pushed the Raikage back, Naruto pulled him again back to the initial position that he was just at and repeated the process. 
pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling. This process was gruesome for his opponent, but a little worse for Naruto, as he basically just had to imagine it happening and it happened, without using much chakra. The Rakage couldn't move, as he was floating above the ground, still under Naruto's grasp, but now Naruto pushes and pulls. Well, they were happening so fast that the Raikage seemed to be just staying in place, though he definitely felt that there was more to it. After 10 seconds of this, the Raikage started to struggle. It was starting to hurt his chest and back, where he felt like he was being squished together by an invisible, huge hand belonging to a monster. Naruto then let him go, but not before smashing the Raikage to the ground leaving a large dent in the concrete. Now, Naruto turned on his Byakugan in one eye, while still having the Rainigan activated in the other. This allowed him to move to the Rikage who was still on the floor, and hit him in the perfect spot in the spine that temporarily stopped Chakra from flowing throughout his whole body, allowing his whole Jutsu arsenal to be completely useless. And that made him lose the ability to use his lightning coating or any lightning style ability, at least for now. Whilst that didn't completely decide the battle, that was a big win for Naruto. Naruto then pulled out a kunai and held it to the Raikage's face. Now the one mocking his opponent was Naruto mocking the Raikage. The audience watched in awe. This kid just defeated the Raikage? A 10-year-old defeating the 4th Raikage. How could this be? The Raikage retaliated though, and even though he had no chakra left, he moved back with incredible speed, gaining his posture once more, and then using his fists as kind of a drill, starting to twist and turn them, and slowly but surely walking towards Naruto, speeding up more and more. Naruto would have to dodge this attack, as the Raikage put so much force into this blow that whoever wouldn't dodge, well, they'd be gone for good. This power would be enough to destroy the entire Raikage village section, which was a few buildings. A truly powerful blow, which was created without any chakra, just with pure strength. The wind that was felt from the turning of his hands was also rather powerful, but didn't do much damage. Naruto then once again hit the Raikage from the back, this time not hitting any specific chakra point, just punching him. And again, and again, and again. A combo attack, a barrage, with about 50 punches. Each one powerful enough to destroy a concrete wall easily. Now the Raikage would fall to the ground once more, this time completely out of commission. It would take him only a few hours to recover, and at this point he would regain his chakra, though the fight was already decided. Naruto of the Leaf won against the 4th Raikage, whilst having an age difference of about 30 years. Naruto was only 10 years old, and yet he won against the 4th Raikage, probably the second strongest Kage currently in place. At this point, Naruto and Yijito are officially made Jonin by the Raikage himself. Naruto now being the youngest Jonin of the Hidden Cloud to have ever existed, and actually the youngest Jonin to have ever lived in any Shinobi village and the entire history of Shinobi. Yujito being not far from that either, being only 14 and already being a Jonin. You gotta think about it. Itachi was 12 when he became a Jonin, and Shisui was only 11 years old, though Naruto was even younger, being pretty much exactly 10 years old and one week, which is far younger than anyone any other Jonin. And he is also the youngest to have ever defeated a Kage, especially in a one-on-one -on -one match like that one. 
where Naruto seemed to have very little struggle, if any at all. Naruto barely had to use his hands in that fight, although they were needed towards the end of it. The audience and the whole village respected Naruto even more from this, for, from this day further on. Same goes with the Jonin, who were easily defeated by Naruto and his girlfriend, and then, well, the Raikage, who now respected Naruto as an equal, even though there was such a huge age difference. Naruto at this point was sent on much more missions, sometimes on his own, sometimes with only his girlfriend, Yujito. But even just those two were sent on A-rank missions. Usually A-rank missions are carried out by four Jonin, which truly goes to show how much faith was put into Naruto and Yujito, and they did succeed, very much so. Naruto could be counted almost like a full team, Yujito, of course, the same thing, though not quite as much as Naruto. Killer B continued to train his students, and they did become stronger and actually did participate in the next Chunin exams. Naruto and Yujito slowly made their way to becoming legends. Naruto dubbed the Hidden Flash, as he was fast as a flash, and from the Hidden Cloud, and he was ever hardly seen because he was so fast, which is why his name is the Hidden Flash, and his partner Yuji Toni was dubbed Tempest, because she was also very fast, but not quite like the Flash, where you could sometimes see only his yellow hair pop out of the shadows. Together, as a duo, as a team, as a couple, they were quick and fatal. No one who encountered them in a fight would ever live to tell the tale. At this point, Minato, the fourth Okage, called for a five Kage summit, and specifically requested that Naruto of the Hidden Cloud would come, accompanying the fourth Raikage A. And by the way, if you didn't know, yes, that, that is literally his name, just A, just the first letter of the alphabet, A. And that is also the third Raikage's name, which I believe was his father, just also the same name, just A. Pretty funny. Anyways, so the Kage summit came to happen. And the ones brought along from the Hidden Cloud were actually the three Jinchuriki, the attack team. The speedy couple, Yujito and Naruto, as well as Killer B who was also not to be messed with. With his total control over his tailed beast and his chakra, as well as his swordsmanship, which was also not to be underestimated. Now everybody arrives at the Kage summit, where Minato seems to be in a very bad mood. He brought along his wife, his student, Kakashi, third Hokage, and Jiraiya the Gallant. Minato immediately started by saying, Why the hell did I get a paper report saying that Naruto, my former son, is now a Jonin? Already bad enough that he became a Chunin and quote unquote won the Chunin exams. And now you're saying that he's worthy of becoming a Jonin? Are you kidding me? A. If this is a joke, this is not funny. You don't know what you're messing with here. He's a monster, worse than the Nine Tails or any other tailed beast. He is the evil that the Child of Prophecy shall destroy. He is that evil that creates war and death. The other Kage looked a little bit surprised. They knew that Minato did, well, put his own son, basically leaving him to die. But they didn't know that he had such a strong hatred towards his own son. It was always obvious that he didn't like him, but this is sickening. 
but no one spoke up about it. Naruto seemed to have a bored face, although she was taking this rather seriously. She just didn't want to react to his father's words, or former father, however you want to say. Meanwhile, he was holding his girlfriend's hand, who was thinking of a way to soothe him, as this likely brought up, and death. The other Kagi looked a little bit surprised. They knew that Minato did, well, put his own son, basically leaving him to die, but they didn't know that he had such a strong hatred towards his own son. It was always obvious that he didn't like him, but this is sickening. But no one spoke up about it. Naruto seemed to have a bored face. Although she was taking this rather seriously. She just didn't want to react to his father's words, or former father, however you want to say. Meanwhile, he was holding his girlfriend's hand who was thinking of a way to soothe him, as this likely brought up emotions and feelings that likely weren't so pleasant. So, Minato concluded, I vote for Naruto to lose his title of Jonin, and actually even lose his title of Chunin or Genin. He technically didn't ever pass the Genin exam. He put himself under a fake name, and we're still looking for the one that allowed it. There is likely someone that he manipulated on the inside. And he probably forced them to help him. The monster that he is. Manipulating people as a child. Hmm. I don't think we should be fighting or even just voting against a child. Don't you think? Minato, Onoki responded. Even though Onoki didn't like Minato at all, for Minato killed many people of the Stone Village during the Third Shinobi War that he had a major role in, and mainly fought against people of the Stone and Hidden Cloud, which is why their relations with the Leaf Village was not good at all. So, after looking at the Raikage's face, as well as Naruto, who was standing next to him, Anoki decided to vote against taking Naruto's title away, since even if he was unbiased, Naruto did earn that title himself, and is very powerful. By the way, no one actually knows that Naruto was able to beat the Raikage, since they kind of kept that low. It would put a bad name on the Raikage, and Naruto didn't mind. He didn't really care about his reputation that much, and especially not if it harmed one of his friends. So yeah, the Raikage was actually a friend to Naruto, just like Killer B was, or any of the other of the villagers. In the midst of the vote, three of the five parties had now locked in their vote, well, mentally. The Leaf represented by Minato voting for Naruto's title of Jonin being taken away down to the core, making Naruto not even a genin anymore, since according to them, he cheated and lied his way through the ranks. The Hidden Cloud was obviously against this as they were the ones who made Naruto a jonin in the first place, and he is a key part of their village, being one of the strongest if not the strongest person in the village, having defeated their Kage. And the Hidden Rock who hated the Leaf and especially Minato also voted against Naruto's abolishment. So currently, it's 2 to 1, the leading force being Naruto keeping his Jonin title. So two parties remain, the village hidden in the sand and the village hidden in the mist. The sand did have alright relations with the leaf, but couldn't ignore that Naruto single-handedly tamed their Jinchuriki and made him become an influential and strong figure in the sand because he was powerful like a Jinchuriki, but also smart when it comes to politics, and was even rumored to become the next Kazekage if he aged a bit and got more experience. The Kazekage was split. Meanwhile, the fifth Muzukage, Mei, was thinking about her vote, but decides to vote along with Minato slash the Hidden Leaf. 
as to not be mixed up in any drama since because she didn't really care, she just chose the safer vote for her village since she didn't want to become enemies with the leaf. So the votes now were two against two, and the final decision would be up to the Kazikage. At this point, the actual voting began. Because as this whole monologue was just the Kage's thinking of their answer of the vote. The vote began with the question, who is for Naruto losing his rank as a Jonin and even his ranks of Chunin and Genin which were only achieved by manipulation and lying? Minato was the first to vote and raised his hand. The Raikage did not raise his hand, for he was against the vote. Mei, the fourth Mizukage was for it, and the Tsushikage against it. So now it was up to the Kazekage. He would be the one to decide Naruto's future. The Kazekage thought about it and said, How about we let Naruto decide? He is the one in question after all. What do you mean? The Raikage asked curiously. Of course he's gonna choose to stay a Jonin, Minato yelled angrily. It's not gonna be that simple. He will have to prove that he's worthy of the title himself, the Kagaze Kage said. I will do it, Naruto said confident as ever. I, Naruto, accept this challenge of yours to prove myself. So be it. Is everyone in favor? The Kaze Kage asked. Minato, you can even pick a test for Naruto to prove himself if you want to. Everyone nodded, even Minato was confident, because he could just choose something impossible for Naruto to do, which would make him lose his title of Jonin. It's that simple. And he could blame it even more on Naruto because he technically had the chance, right? It was the ultimate victory. The first test was a really easy one, to prove that Naruto was allowed to keep his rank of Genin. The Kazekage chose this test and it was just to make an any type of clone jutsu flawlessly and he would pass. He only had to do one clone too, so it was really easy. Naruto did a tailed beast style clone perfectly which allowed him to pass with no problem. The second test was much harder. It was to fight Kushina Uzumaki and stay conscious and in the ring standing for more than a minute. This was gonna be a difficult one because Kushina had incredible, extraordinary amounts of chakra. Being a former Jinshiriki and still having some of the Tail Beast chakra, and being a full Uzumaki, who are known to have many times over that of a normal human's chakra. Even more than any of the Ochiha or Senju. Naruto was to fight a powerful Jonin, and he definitely would. He easily outmatched in speed, however, and won the fight like that. Similarly, like the way he fought the Raikage, where he just hit a specific chakra point with the help of the Byakugan, basically knocking out her chakra system. However, he hid his Byakugan as best as possible from all the Kage, especially Minato, as to not make the situation even more complicated and have to explain himself since he's far from being a Hyuga. This now completely negated Kushina's massive amounts of chakra, and therefore Naruto easily won the fight since his taijutsu was far superior to Kushina's. Now for the final test. Minato said that Naruto was to fight himself. So Naruto would have to fight the fourth Hokage, Minato Namikaze. And if he was able to last more than 30 seconds standing in the fight, he deserved to have the title of Jonin. Everyone went into an open area only about 50 meters away. 150 feet if you're American by the way where Naruto and Minato would fight. Everyone backed off from the two fighters and formed a sort of circle. Yujito gave Naruto a quick kiss and then she joined the Raikage and Killer B in the circle. The fight was now to begin. In 3, 2, 1, GO! Minato immediately rushed towards Naruto and threw a kunai, which Naruto dodged. But unlike the Raikage, Minato was so fast that a simple technique of the Rinnegan like pushing or pulling would not be enough to render him immobile. Minato was just simply that fast. Naruto basically copies Minato's moves, takes out a kunai out of his pocket and charges towards Minato. Minato takes out another kunai and they meet halfway and their kunais clash. They make a clinging sound, but only one second later Minato is 
behind and above Naruto, charging up a Rasengan to smash into Naruto's spine. Naruto turns around quickly and punches Minato in the gut, knocking him back slightly. That punch definitely had some power in it, but not enough for Minato. Now Naruto's on the offensive, turns on his 3 Tomoe Sharingan. This allows him to see Minato's moves before they even happen. Minato was dodging the best he could. He threw out a bunch of new kunai and was basically teleporting to each one as soon as Naruto caught up to him. This lasted for another 5 seconds. And now, without anyone realizing, Minato charged up another Rasengan. Though this time, instead of dodging it or hitting it back, Naruto would match the Rasengan and collide his Rasengan with Minato's Rasengan. Minato would realize too late what Naruto is doing, and then the Rasengans collide. A bright flash could be seen all around, and some animals watching were temporarily blinded. The ground everywhere was torn up from the sheer force of the blow. Wind, almost like a hurricane, came around, but the eye of the storm was right above Naruto and Minato, who seemed to be frozen in time. But when everything was over, they were both laying there on the ground. Minato, well, it was bad news. The fourth Hokage's arm was missing. The only part left of it was his shoulder. Same goes for Naruto. They lay there for another 20 seconds, both of them unconscious. Minato had put all of his chakra into that one blow, as that was his plan to finish Naruto off. And Naruto, well, he didn't want to hurt Minato too much, but he did put a lot of chakra into that blow. Not all of his chakra, but definitely a lot. Enough to match Minato's Rasengan, and a little bit more. However, unlike you might think, the fight was decided clear as day. You might think it's a draw. You might think nobody won, and nobody lost. But, remember the agreement at the beginning? Minato said that Naruto has to be standing after 30 seconds. And that was not the case. After watching and reading some feedback, I realized that you guys didn't really like the last part, which is why I'm actually going to change the story a little bit here, and actually kind of go back in time and change what happened. Now it's not going to be a huge change, but it is going to be a significant one, in that Naruto actually kind of realized that Minato was going to use a lot more power, which is why Naruto was the one to actually overpower Minato, and put in more chakra at the very last moment to instead of break Naruto's arm and actually, well, annihilate it, Minato's arm was still annihilated as normal, but all it did to Naruto was actually break some bones in his hand, and that's it. So he was the last one standing, and therefore won his bout. Sorry, won the bout with Minato. Which is why here he's actually able to keep his Joni title and actually was able to defeat the fourth Hokage, which is a win in itself, to be honest. Now, all the Kage have a deep respect for him since it was shown that Naruto may actually be the st like stronger than any of the five Kage, which is very impressive for a 10 year old boy. But it says it in the title, right? Now, Minato, when waking back up in a hospital in the Leaf Village, would not accept this loss, but would have to deal with it for now. His hatred grew stronger and stronger for Naruto, as he was not only now fighting a monster, but someone who made the fourth Hokage look bad. The entire village of Konoha look bad, because a ten-year-old was able to defeat their Kage. It was like an insult. Naruto was making fun of them. He would have to get revenge on that little boy. On that demon. 
as well as the other villages that voted against Minato's idea of abolishing Naruto's Jonin titles, and of course Chunin and Genin as well. However, even though he won, Naruto would keep training at this point, and after being congratulated by each Kage as to keep his Jonin rank, he went back to the Cloud Village. When I already have gotten back to the village, the Raikage apologizes that Naruto even had to go through those challenges because, well, technically, the Raikage could have just, well, talked about the contract that the five villagers had, which basically said, Leaf Village, get out of my business. But the Raikage forgot. And I know it sounds stupid, but he genuinely forgot. So, yeah, technically he could have stopped us, but since it ended in an okay way, it was okay. But, yeah, he apologizes, and that's no ended story now. Now, at this point, there will be a pretty big time skip, though of course there's things that happen in between. And the reason for that is that I need to catch up to Shippuden. Therefore, we need a 5 year time skip. So, that will happen, but a few things to note in between. As I said before, Naruto will be training like crazy. Not as crazy as when, as in the scenario that he actually lost the fight with Minato, but he is still gonna train uh, pretty hard. Naruto is actually going to become an Anbu. Now this is not right off the bat, this is about one year after his kind of training time skip happened and also he's not going to seclude himself from the village like the first time so don't worry about that he still has because of his connections he still walks through the village regularly grabs some food talks to his friends does shinobi duties all of that beautiful stuff one day the title beast come together and tell naruto on his 12th birthday that he's now ready for his summoning jutsu. Naruto always knew what summoning jutsu was and how to do it, but was never really eager to have one since his friends was all he needed. He didn't want a summoning to be honest. Though when the tailed beast enlightened him about what he could have, he definitely wanted one. Naruto had the ability to summon any of the tailed beasts, kind of, well, as a summon instead of a real tailed beast though the power of his summon, it was equal to their actual tail beast that he was summoning. So for example, if he summoned the nine tails, it would be 100% of the nine tails chakra and the, the missing chakra for any of the tail beasts Naruto would make up from his own since he does have enough chakra definitely. So his summoning of the nine tails for example would be strong enough to take down the leaf or Minato like it did in the normal events of the Night of the Nine Tails. So yeah, his summoning, very powerful. Now his Sage Chakra is kind of similar. He doesn't have a toad or a snake or a slug or anything like that. He also has a tailed beast kind of sage chakra so he is actually the very first sage of tailed beasts and has tailed beast chakra since the tailed beasts are basically incarnations of pure chakra and i guess parts of the nine tails too but they also kind of grab some chakra from nature energy and naruto basically converts the energy that they take from nature chakra and makes it his own. So indirectly he's using the tail beast to gather chakra for him, which makes it nine times as effective as effective as if it was just him gathering nature chakra. It takes about a month of training, but Naruto finally becomes a perfect tail beast sage. A few months later, Naruto actually got a message from who would have guessed? The Sage of Six Paths, Agromo Otsutsuki himself. 
It was kind of like Minato did with Kurama. A little bit of his chakra imprinted into each one of the tail beasts. As if anyone ever combined or had all the tail beasts inside them and was almost a perfect in Shuriki at least, they would get a certain message. And that was the one that Naruto is currently receiving. If you're reading this or hearing this, you're very powerful. And probably even more powerful than I will be or have been. However, the chakra message slowly gained somewhat of a consciousness and was see able to see the tail beast and Naruto standing in front of him. Magromo was kind of like a ghost at this point. A fading chakra apparition, but slowly but surely, for some reason, gaining strength. For now, only enough to talk and see things, but who knows, perhaps he could grow stronger, but for now, that was only a fantasy. Hagoromo, who could now see basically the children of his, the tailed beast, and their inheritors, their ultimate Jinchuriki, Naruto, who at this point was not much older than 12. What a young boy, Hagoromo thought to himself but he must be very powerful to be able to control and have the respect of all the tailed beasts. Couldn't have been very easy, huh? Hello there, young boy. My name is Hagoromo, Otsutsuki, son of the Mother of Chakra. You might know me as the Sage of the Six Paths. Perhaps. Oh, you're, you're the Sage of Six Paths? Wow, I was... I was not expecting that. You look... Very old. Naruto knew the story of the Otsutsuki. And how Kaguya was the mother of Chakra. And stuff like that. Or, at least... As best as possible, told by the Tailed Beasts. As they didn't know everything about it. But Hagoromo told the story in more detail, and from his point of view. And honestly, it made more sense than when people like Kurama or Shukaku told the story. Especially Shukaku, who was terrible at explaining. And not even the other tailed beasts who had been around him for multiple centuries still didn't understand what he was saying. So, <laughs> yeah. Now tell me, boy. For this time, I've been sensing chakra in your eyes but i can tell that you're not from the uchiha hyuga or especially not the otsutsuki clan so what is it how is it that you have so much chakra in your eyes agaroma asked and at this point naruto activated his renegon in one eye and his mangekyo sharingan in the other agaroma was flabbergasted a boy so young, not e not just able to have multiple dojutsu as powerful as the Renigan and Mangekyo Sharingan, but being able to control them so perfectly, turn them on and off, one eye and the other. Incredible. It took Hagoromo decades to master that. And Naruto was barely a decade old. Naruto explained how he got a lot of Keke Genkai especially dojutsu, by just training and imagining himself having those things and they just kind of appeared one day. Wow. Now that is cool. Hagoromo tried to use modern day language but failed miserably. He only got a slight glimpse of some of the thoughts of the tail beasts and Naruto's history and emotions, so he wasn't that aware of the modern world, but did know a few things, and even knew of legends like Hashirama and Madara, who he had been observing earlier as just pure chakra. Naruto continued his training over the months, which turned into years. 
when he was finally 15 years old. Agromo kind of sticked around in his head ever since. He didn't do much, though occasionally talked to Naruto, especially the tail beasts. Mostly caught up with them, especially at the beginning. Told Naruto some training he could do, Segen Keke Genkai or techniques that he could learn, etc. Now, Naruto was strong. Really, really strong. Stronger than Hagoromo, Hamura, or even Kaguya herself. Now, Naruto was truly on a godly Otsutsuki level. Basically, no human could ever defeat him at this point. Not even a reincarnation of Indra or Ashura, or even if it was the reincarnation of the Sage of Six Paths himself, no one could defeat Naruto at this point. At the very minimum, no one from this planet. Naruto became one of the most respected Anbu in the entire village, and actually became almost a symbol for the bingo book. Yes, you heard right. Naruto was put into the bingo book, multiple times actually, and was now classed as an SS plus rogue shinobi. I know technically he's not rogue, but he's kind of rogue if you think about it. It's kind of confused. Some people think of him as a rogue shinobi, some people don't. It's kind of a mixed opinion. But anyways, most important thing you gotta know, he is in the bingo book. And he is on the front page. From threatening to keeping people in check, especially his popularity and Naruto was thought of to be by far the strongest in the Hidden Cloud Village, and even some people from other villages thought he was the strongest in the world. Stronger than the Five Kages, any Jonin, Anbu, or anybody. Even the strongest amongst the Rogue Shinobi, which there was definitely some powerful ones. Some people even said Naruto, if he lived in the same age, could have defeated Hashirama and Madara even when they were working together. Especially in smaller villagers, Naruto became feared, as if he was ever to arrive and had anything negative to do with that village, it could be wiped off from the face of the planet in mere seconds if Naruto wanted to. Naruto didn't really mind though, being hated or feared. He just wanted to everyone for, to know who he was. And if hated, or scared, or feared, or not, his reputation grew day after day. So the time skip was now done, and Naruto is currently 15 years old, feared by many people as a legendary Anbu working in the shadows, along with his partner Yujito, who would also become quite a Konoichi with well, it's not as impressive and it's Naruto's quite a big reputation too. Together, they were an unstoppable duo. Even alone they were. They were gods of Shinobi at their young age. People were scared to even think about what they could become when they were older. Even some of the Jonin feared Naruto and Yujito. Even some of the hidden cloud shonin and weaker shinobi who didn't know Naruto personally sometimes got a little bit frightened of Naruto. He didn't even need to have a strong or scary chakra aura. Everybody just knew not to mess with him. Minato over the last five years had truly declined. His popularity among the people declined, his power declined, and his happiness declined too. He became somewhat desperate, lost a lot of his power by losing one of his arms, though he did get a mechanical one, though it wasn't as good. It greatly impacted his speed and being able to throw shuriken, kunai, and rasengan and teleport all at the same time. He now had to do most stuff with just one hand. 
Anyways, back to Naruto. There was now a big mission coming up. Naruto and Yujito were both called to the Raikage's office. Just those two though, as there were more than enough. The mission? Well, it was to help find and rescue Gara, the Jinchuriki of the One Tills. A rather close friend to Naruto, even though they didn't have that much contact anymore. However, more importantly, at least the mission details, stated that Gara became a Kazekage. The Kazekage. Naruto knew this, of course, but it still kind of shocked him every time he heard it. Though, he was concerned about Gara's well-being. If there was an A-rank mission to rescue him, I mean, he is a Kage, but still, an A-rank mission? That seems a little harder than it should be, but I guess someone able to capture him would be very strong. This mission is an A++ rank, by the way, not just an ordinary A rank. But Naruto and Yujito immediately made their way to the sand village without asking any questions or having to have any prep time. They just went for it, and in only about 30 minutes, they arrived in the sand village. They immediately rushed to the Kazekage's office, where there was currently a meeting held of the village's officials, determining what would happen next. They knew they were getting backup from some village or some people who would help them, but they didn't expect them to come so soon. By the way, in this story I'm going to say that the Sand Village sent out a note to all the five shinobi villages. But Naruto's duo was the first one to actually arrive in the Sand Village. So, yeah, they were first. By far. So, after a quick five minute talk, Naruto and Yuchito were brought to Gara's brother, the puppeteer, Kankuro, who had been injured by the attackers and invaders. Naruto also got notice that the invaders were of a group called the Akatsuki, which Naruto would know of, and had been not just suspicious, but wary of for the last few months. As he knew they were gonna attack soon and currently planning something, but he didn't expect them to attack this soon. But oh well, he would just have to deal with it. So anyways, Naruto is using the Sage of Tailed Beast Chakra which is able to help heal Kankuro's wounds and basically take the poison out of him. Don't ask how, okay? It's magic. Then, the duo quickly heads towards the actual Akatsuki hideout, where Gara is being held, hopefully not hurt, or in the worst case, dead, yet. So, Naruto and Yujito go as fast as possible, and basically get there in what feels like an instant, they arrive in less than 10 seconds, and then they see the locks, or seals, on the rock, on the door, but it's no problem. Yujito immediately opens them, and Naruto never even stops walking. He continues to walk as if knowing that Yujito was gonna open the locks. They had become such a good team that they barely even talked when going on missions, they just knew what the, each other needed. There, they see Deidoro and Sosori, who are still carrying Gara's unconscious body, but nothing bad had happened to him yet. Wait, is- No. It can't be. I is that you? N N Naruto and Yujito? The, the duo of death? <laughs> Sasori, you know these two? Deidoro somehow does not know who Naruto or Yujito are. I know it doesn't make sense, but it's funnier. Just go along with it, okay? They're children, come on, they can't be that bad. Damn you, Daedra! You better take this seriously! If you don't, we're gonna die here! Because just those two showing up has already ruined all of our plans. Not just ours, but the entire Akatsuki. To be honest, if I could, I would run right now. Run for my life. Hope that those two don't find me. But they're too fast. Too fast for anyone. 
Even the yellow flash of Konoha can outrun them. What? Wait a minute. You, you Really? Dater asked. Yes, you think I'd be lying to you? Sasori responds. Well, no matter. You two children, you know what? Art is an explosion. Or the other way around. I don't know. However you want it. But it's cool, isn't it? Here, catch! As Theodora throws a bomb as Naruto catches it, but it explodes in his face. Funny. I'm laughing. In the same moment, Yujito dashes forward and tackles Daedara, who fell to the ground, already unconscious. Naruto had put a genjutsu under him whilst he wasn't looking. Well, that was the problem. He was actually looking. So, you know who we are, huh? W well, of course, everybody does, except for this idiot. Sasori responds. Okay, well, we're gonna be nice to you. If you tell us who they are, and where we can find the other Akatsuki, we'll maybe let you go. Yujito responds. I I I'll tell you everything, I promise. Okie dokie, thank you. Well, it's Naruto and Yujito, and, well... The high officials and strong shinobi of the whole Hidden Leaf knew a lot about the Akatsuki. They wanted to get more information, as much as possible. Even if it was just a single piece of information, it could be very valuable. By the way, Gara at this point was still sleeping, not harmed at all. And Daedra still unconscious from the Genjutsu. So, Sasori explained everything he was able to. And that's... It. Now, I must go. I have committed too many sins in my lifetime, and therefore, I must do this. A sorcery rams a knife through his chest, ending his life. Dator is then taken care of, and Naruto takes Gara on his back, letting him piggyback ride him until they get back to the village where Gara finally wakes up. Everyone is happy and the mission was successful. Very successful. Just Naruto and Yujito were easily able to take out two Okatsuki members and get a lot of information, as well as strengthen their bonds with the Sand Village. Because at this point, whilst Naruto and Yujito had already done the whole mission, about 500 meters away, one and a half thousand feet by the way if you're American, they saw a team of Leaf Shinobis just arrive. And for some odd reason, it was a Genin team. Naruto kind of wanted to know why they would send Genin on such a difficult mission, but to be honest, didn't really want to know. So he took Yujito by the hand and they went back to the Hidden Cloud, shared their information and had a free day. Went out on a date and had a great time. Now it was time for the Tenshi Bridge, where Sasori told Naruto and Yujito to meet up with Orochimaru. Neither of them had really ever had any experiences or even met Orochimaru. They just heard stories and legends. So they were somewhat excited, but also a little bit scared, a little bit cautious. I mean, he was the world's most well-known criminal after all, so don't want to get into things too fast with him. Naruto disguised himself as Sasori and went to the bridge with Yujito watching in the shadows. Kabuto, one of Orochimaru's subordinates, handed over the scroll with information to the fake Sasori and then walked back. But then Orochimaru jumped up from the bushes he was hiding from into the middle of the bridge where Naruto was standing. You are exactly like him, and don't show any signs of a fake, though I know for a fact that Sasori is dead. He killed himself only a few days ago, though I know. So who are you, and why are you taking his place? Well, I guess no one's hiding anymore. Alright, well, I'm Naruto, that's my girlfriend Yujito in the back, you can come out now. 
Naruto yells. Hi. As Yujito is suddenly standing right beside Naruto, as if she was standing there the whole time. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. N n n Naruto and Yujito as in... F from the Hidden Cloud? Yeah, that's right. Continue. Yujito tried to help him out. But Orochimaru was lost for words. These days, there was more talk about Naruto and Yujito than there was about the legendary Sani gone rogue Orochimaru. They became more popular and famous than Orochimaru. And he doesn't know for sure, but who knows? At least in the future, they might actually become stronger than Orochimaru. I can help you get incredible power. Orochimaru starts. Listen, we know your whole thing, okay? You don't need to start a presentation. We know, okay? You're not gonna take over our bodies. Respectfully, we decline. Naruto says, and Yujito nods. Uh, okay. Then why are you here exactly? Huh? Just for our village. Just... To fight the Akathi, I guess. Yep. Well, I mean, to hand over information to Sasori. You you know this, don't you? It's a nice weather today, huh? Naruto asks. Okay, why the hell are you asking me about weather? Raichimaru starts. Nah, I agree. The sun is shining beautifully today. Yujito continues. What? Raichimaru does not understand anything of what's going on right now. Okay, well, let's stop with the jokes. Orochimaru, we'd like you to stop doing anything against the Hidden Cloud, alright? Against the other villages, we don't care, at least for now. But try to be respectful, yeah? Thank you, and we'll take the information still, right? If you don't mind? Alright, see you later. And Naruto and Yujito are already gone with the scroll of information and Urchimaru and Kabuto are left speechless standing on Tenshi Bridge not knowing what the hell just happened. Naruto and Yujito bring back the scroll of information to the Rakage, report what happened and take a day off once more since they're doing missions faster than anybody can even imagine which gives the Hidden Cloud an even better reputation than they already had now harboring probably two of the most powerful shinobi in the world. Stronger than any Kage, at the age of just a teenager. At this point, Hidan and Kakuzu, of the Akatsuki as well, start acting up. Now, a Leaf Village team is sent out, being only Chunin and to Jonin. But even that does not seem to be enough, and Asuma Sarutobi, a strong Jonin, and a sensei, leaves his life behind, and dies. Or at least, that's how it would be. More on that soon. So actually, Naruto and Yujito, who were also sent out just to watch Hidan and Kakuzu's moves, see that the leaf team is fighting which is really stupid in naruto's opinion and it is as proven by asuma's death but afterwards when hidan and kakuzu have left and people like shikamaru are mourning on their knees looking at asuma's dead body naruto crawls down from the rooftop that they were standing on and walks towards the grip of shinobi Hello, um, do you want him back? Naruto asked, as if it was a normal thing to bring the dead back to life. However, Shikamaru didn't even hear him. He was so caught up in his own thoughts and emotions. Hey, I'm talking to you. Shikamaru turns around with tears in his eyes and says, do whatever you want. Alright, fair enough. Naruto turns on his Renegon, brings forward the King of Hell, 
which is able to, at least to some degree, decide over life and death, calls for the soul of Asuma Sarutobi, and it arrives in Naruto's hand, floating as if already trying to escape to heaven. And here you go, this might hurt. <laughs> Naruto pushes the soul into Asuma's ribcage, and with one small crack in his bones, Saratobi jumps up, brought back to life. Asuma Saratobi is back. Shikamaru stops crying and is wondering what just happened. Everyone now notices who Naruto actually is. And is scared, though very thankful that he was, for some reason, willing to bring back a strong Jonin and a good friend of theirs. Whatever your reason may be, thank you, Naruto, Asuma says. Naruto had just revived Asuma Sarutobi, who had been previously killed by Hidan and Kakuzu, especially Hidan, who dealt the finishing blow. Sartobi is asking why Naruto would ever want to help the Leaf and revive one of its citizens and Shinobi. Naruto doesn't have a clear answer, so he just smiles and says, Why not? I mean, I saw that your friends were pretty upset, so you know, I can just help. It's not biggie. By the way, how's the fourth Okage? <laughs> I'll do nothing more than thank you for what you did. But that doesn't mean that we will get along or we're friends. Just so you know. Goodbye. And I hope I will never cross your path again. Naruto. Ooh. Cold shoulder, huh? Well, see ya. Naruto kind of expected them to leave without really thanking him, so... I guess it still went better than he expected. But after the Leap Shinobi are gone, Naruto and Yujito go back to hunt. Hidan and Kakuzu, since they were already there and, you know, they might as well kill two of the Akatsuki, take care of them, whilst they're already there. So they do. There's really not much about this fight to say. I mean, Hidan and Kakuzu are easily ma outmatched by Yujito and Naruto, even just one of them. They find out Kakuzu's secret pretty fast, but are not sure how to deal with Hidan, so Naruto uses his... Renegan to suck up his soul and then transfer it over to his King of Hell ability, which basically takes care of it. And therefore, Hiran is dead, even though he's technically immortal. I will say that he will die in this scene. So, anyways, two of the Akatsuki members are now taken care of, which now makes a total of four, being Hiran, Kakuzu, Sasori, and Deidoro. Let's head back to the village, yeah? This was enough of a mission for the day. So let's go. Yujito says, and then they both go back to the hidden cloud. In a speed to most incomprehensible. Faster than any of Minato or Shisui's ability. This could ever let them. Asuma, the same day still, reports what had happened. That he had actually died on the mission that he was sent on. But for some odd reason, Naruto, the one banished from the Leaf, and almost stripped of his rank because of the Leaf, somehow, and for some reason, brought Asuma back to life. This was big news to anyone in the village and spread fast. At first only contained in the Jonin, then to Chunin, then all Shinobi, and then even the normal citizens. By the way, Minato was still the Hokage, even after quite a few years had passed. He was definitely still the Hokage. Naruto and Yujito safely got back to their village. I mean, what else could harm them? There was literally nothing. And they had a nice week. However, sadly didn't get to talk or meet Killer B since he was out on missions. Oh, and by the way, his Genin team was no longer a Genin team. They'd all graduated and become successful Chunin. One of them even becoming a Jonin. Sorry, scratch that. Two. Two, actually. After just five years of having been a Genin, they are now a Jonin. 
quite a feat. But I mean, when you have mentors like Killer B and are friends with Yujito and Naruto, well, you kind of become powerful too. So anyways, Naruto and Yujito have a really chill time. They don't need to train, don't need to do any missions as Shinobi. They can just relax for a while. Which is good, until they hear this. When called to the Raikage's office, they ask what's going on, since they should have a little more free time until their next mission. They were promised a full week, but so far it had been five days. Then the Raikage says that the Leaf requested help. It's weird, the Leaf hasn't requested help from the Hidden Cloud for multiple years now and hadn't even been willing to talk to the Hidden Cloud or the Raikage for quite a while now too. So it wouldn't make sense for them to just suddenly call for help. But, out of the kindness of his heart, the Raikage requested Naruto and Yujito to check it out, since if the Leaf was plotting anything bad, Naruto and Yujito could protect themselves against literally anything, even if the Hokage himself decided to try to something, so... They were the best bat and safe candidates to go. The letter didn't even specify exactly what kind of mission or how hard, it just specified that they need help. But the Raikage kind of figured that it would be a hard mission or else they really wouldn't call for help, especially not to the Hidden Cloud. So as usual, after just 5 minutes, Naruto and Yujito make their way, and in just 5 seconds they were there. Naruto was a little bit impatient, so he went a little quicker than usually. On their way, they always held hands, which is why if Naruto goes faster, Yujito goes with him. But nonetheless, they arrive at the leaf very quickly, enter the gates without even asking the guards or letting them talk to them. But they're going at a speed where the guards can't even recognize anything. It's as if nothing ever even happened. So the two go into the Hokage's office and ask Minato what the hell is going on and why they would call for the Leaf's help. Minato is shocked as well as the other people in the room, which we're currently discussing strategies to do this mission. All of them are at least to some degree scared of Naruto, Yujito, and the power that they have. They are stronger than anyone in the five shinobi villages and definitely stronger than the leaf village minato's angry that he didn't specify that naruto and yujito shouldn't go to this mission whilst of course it's good that they're coming because they're powerful but that just doesn't work minato and naruto don't mix together especially not on a mission and Naruto shouldn't go to the Leaf Village at all. That's not gonna work. And Yujito neither, because, well, she's kind of like Naruto. But whatever. Naruto and Yujito are immediately caught up with the mission plans and what the mission is about. It's an S plus rank mission. The mission, you ask? Well, it was actually pretty simple. To take down the Akatsuki. Minato, along with the whole village on his side, especially the elders and other shinobi, called for the help of all five shinobi villages and anyone willing to help their cause. Because they knew that the Akatsuki would no longer play games. They were now on the move. However, what they didn't know is that the sand and hidden cloud had already kind of worked on the Akatsuki. Especially the Hidden Cloud. I mean, they had already taken down four of the Shinobi of the Akatsuki. Now, the Leaf did not know this, so their first plan and strategy was to take down Hidan and Kakuzu, who were already previously monitored by a suppression squad, who though had to come back due to problems, is what they said. Though really, Naruto and Yujito both knew that their mission went terribly, and that one of them even died. Well, that is, if Naruto wasn't there. Okay, well, I, I need to interrupt this meeting. 
right? We have a lot of people here, so we really shouldn't waste their time. So I'm just gonna say this quick. The Hidden Cloud, especially my girlfriend and I, have already been working somewhat hard on suppressing the Akatsuki. So you doing this is kind of wasting our time and also getting in our way. So if you could just not do that, that'd be great. Thank you. What do you mean you, you'd already been suppressing the Akatsuki? One of the Jonin asked shyly. Oh. Um, we've taken down one, two, three, four. Four of the members already. F four of them? But that's like, that that's like almost half, isn't it? Sure, I guess so. Naruto is pretty bad at maths, even though he was pretty smart. He was still bad at maths. So, so, w which members have you taken down? And, by the way, when? Isn't our intel new? Oh, well, two of them were the ones that you guys tried to hunt down, but, I mean, you failed miserably, so we took care of them. They were Hiran and Kakuzu, I believe. And then before, with going to the sand... Well, there were already two Akatsuki basically presenting themselves on an open platter, so we just picked them up. We also got a whole lot of information about a Sanin from your village that left you guys? Or Chumaru. Yeah, he's actually a nice guy. You should, you should, you should talk to him. Anyways, like I was saying, we've already taken down four members, so your plan is already outdated and is not useful. We can take care of this. Y'all can just, I don't know, have a vacation. Just relax, you know, chill. We'll take her. See ya. As Naruto was slowly heading for the door already, leaving everyone shocked, but also very impressed. Naruto at 15 years old, is this powerful? Knows these kind of things. Was able to as far as they know, at least help in the efforts to suppress the strongest group of rogue shinobis currently active. Although, before I leave actually, do you guys know where their hideout is? Because if you do, I think I'll just go over there to do it now. You know, then... Actually, then I could maybe take a longer vacation. Maybe go... Go somewhere. That'd be cool. So, so do you? Um, we do, but going in there alone is suicide. Even for you. No one can do that. Not even all five Kage could. <laughs> the Kage? Come on. They're not stronger than us. They're not that much stronger than anyone here. Come on, even you guys are close to a Kage level. Right? You're Jonin. Come on. You should know the ranks. Jonin isn't that far underneath Akage, so it makes sense, right? Yeah, but still, as I said, even the five Kage can't do that on their own. So why do you think you and your girlfriend can? You're not even a real shinobi, you're kids, one of the Jonin said, who was still pretty new, so he didn't know that much about Naruto. He only knew that he was famous, and at least to some extent, strong. Naruto, without even having to activate his Sharingan or any Dojutsu, was able to put the weak Genin, sorry, Jonin, who wasn't currently holding up his guard, into Genjutsu that lasted 12 hours. It wasn't anything horrifying, but it still left him shook, since those 12 hours in the real world lasted a split second, and Naruto did that without any special Dojutsu. With the Sharingan, his Genjutsu are many times stronger than that, and are much harder to break. So Naruto, after quickly getting the information of where the Akatsuki hideout is, leaves along with Yujito and they go. And as soon as they close the door behind them, they basically teleport to in front of the Akatsuki hideout. So now, Naruto decides to knock on the stone cave, with just his knuckles slightly knocking on the rock, he makes the whole cave shake and almost collapse. 
if he wasn't precisely trying to avoid it collapsing. So immediately before he gets another knock, in all of the remaining Akatsuki who we're currently having a meeting inside that cave too, similar to the leaf. We're now standing in front of Naruto, as if trying to kill him for just knocking on their little hideout, which they definitely would and were going to do. They knew of Naruto's strength and honor as a shinobi. Yujito, however, was not overlooked either. However, the Akatsuki, being the strongest gathering and group of rogue shinobi, thought that they could easily get two teenagers. But oh boy, were they wrong. When the Akatsuki made their first move, precisely speaking, Kisame, who had tried to slash his sword at Naruto, Naruto stopped it with one finger, trying to absorb all of their sword's chakra. And whilst the sword was fighting back, Naruto easily overpowered it, then breaking the sword. This took Kisame back, and immediately, he was actually scared of Naruto. No one had ever even come close to being able to resist the sword. And then this kid, this teenager, comes around and breaks it with a finger and his mind? What is wrong with that child? Then the fight truly begins. Jujito jumps forward attacking Conan and immediately being able to pin her down before she's able to use any of her paper jutsu. Then Pain, aka Nagato, tries to use his Renegon to grab both Yujito and Naruto and keep them mid-air. Though Naruto is faster, uses his Renegon and makes Pain fly, and at the same moment understands how Pain is just a puppet and Nagato is the real leader of the Akatsuki. Or at least that's what Naruto is currently thinking. So Nagato, well, his puppet, Pain, was currently trapped in the air. And somehow, for some reason, his Renegon abilities were blocked. Because without knowing it, Naruto is actually using his chakra to interrupt Nagato's chakra flow with just his mind. Yes, you heard that right. Naruto is basically able to hit chakra points with his mind, making Nagato's jutsu and eyes completely irrelevant. And I know it's just a puppet and not technically the real body, but it's still gonna work in this topic and place. So now Naruto and Yujito quickly take care of the rest of the Akatsuki, and I think they already won, but now Toby who doesn't seem silly anymore, comes out of the cave, takes off his mask, and has enough of this. You are interrupting my plans, she says in a deep monotone voice. We just had such a great meeting, Obito continued. So I guess I'll have to take care of you two first. And I'm sorry to say this, but... I'm not good with children, and children aren't welcome here, so I guess I'll have to dispose of you." Obito, who is no longer masked as Toby, immediately opens his Mangekyo Sharingan and tries to Kamui Naruto, but somehow it reflects off of Naruto and bounces back to Obito, however he was just able to dodge it in time. At that moment, Yujito comes up from behind and holds a kunai to Obito's neck. Already outmatched, huh? That was quick. So, you still wanna fight? By the way, that scar does not look great on you, man. Also, you should get a haircut, dude. Naruto was not taking him seriously. So now, the Akatsuki fight was truly over. Laksetsu still cowering in the corner, watching the battle unfold and now end but is quickly taken care of by Naruto's Amaterasu being thrown at him, and then Black Zetsu now burning, being pulled to Naruto with the Renegon ability, and in the end destroyed with an Ashura Rasengan, stronger than any of Minato's or even Ashura's himself, the one who created the Jutsu. Naruto's is many times over stronger than that of any 
Rasengan user. Now all of the Akatsuki, including Black Zetsu, is truly wiped out. Therefore, Kaguya's will is dead. And she will sit in silence in her seal on the moon for all of eternity. At this point, the series technically ends, but I can tell you what happens after these events. Naruto actually becomes the Raikage. Not just that, he becomes the strongest Kage to have ever lived by far, exceeding even the Sage of Six Paths at a young age. Naruto even became a Kage at only the age of 20 years old. He was much stronger than any Kage alive, even at the age of 20. Had incredible experience and smarts that were hard to even be topped by some of the smartest people on the planet. Naruto also married Yuji Toni and harbored two children, and they lived happily ever after. I hope you enjoyed the end of the series, I hope you enjoyed the whole series, and I will wish you a good time on your next adventure. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.